What's up, everybody? Welcome to Flagrant 2. It's your boy Schultz here at Akash Singh. We got Marky Gags. We got Alex Media. We got Miles gang, Media. Gang, we got Dove the Truffle. You know what I'm saying? Shifty might even be lurking mm. in the distance. Young shuffle tips. Um, doesn't have the funny cam going on. Probably read them comments. <laughs> <laughs> I like the com- I like yeah. the fucking funny cam. I thought it was great. I liked Maybe it, it was jarring at first, but yep. you know, you gotta let people Get on adjust. board with it. People got to adjust. Yes. It's like every time they change Facebook, we complain. And then, and then the shit took over yeah. the world. And we love it. Hey, funny cam about to be the only fucking cam, bro. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Stick. Get back up there, Chipples. <laughs> Piece oh of shit. Gosh. Mm. Piece of fucking <laughs> shit. Anyway, happy birthday, Dove. Let's give Dove happy hey, birthday. Hey, happy, hey, birthday. Hey, hey. happy birthday. Thank um, you, Flagrant Army, for. Uh, did you get a lot, lot of happy lot of birthdays? Nice messages. Good. Nicest messages I ever received. <laughs> Good. I like this. Hey, man. You know, Love Dove, you, I didn't get Dove anything for his birthday, but he also has still gotten me uh, nothing for my wedding. And I also want to point out with the state of uh, the crypto market, Akash has also gotten me nothing <laughs> from my letter. So uh, we're losing yeah. gifts as we're going right now. We really you got some knives, though. <laughs> Cut, back. Cut my fucking wrist. <laughs> Cut my neck. <laughs> Commit suicide. Tap me out of this bitch, bro. Oh, my God. Uh, if, if obviously, everybody's watching. You guys know what's going on with the crypto market. I'll buy your crypto There's right st- now. I know you will. I know you will. Stop, stop, stop. But um, but uh, we're gonna have uh, our boy Pizza Boy Anthony Pompliano <laughs> uh, in, on the podcast uh, in Pizza a little boy. bit. Uh, that's my boy. I call son, him Pizza Boy. He, son. Pe- he stopped peddling it when it was back at sixty four. He's gonna be working no the race. <laughs> <laughs> keeps going in this direction. But uh, he said we'll all cry together on the pod, and uh, he's uh, he's gonna zoom in. By the way, because uh, uh, them he flights is flight, expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's down in Miami still. So he said he'd call on and uh, we'll talk and figure out what's going on and how the, the Fed is uh, influencing the markets a bit and, Ooh. you know, what's all going on. It all comes down to the Fed. The Remember fucking the Fed? Fed, bro. You think yeah, I bro. forgot about the Fed? Bill still, let's You think go. I forgot about Young the Fed? Legend. I feel like Al did his hair like this so I make fun of him. I, I, I feel know. like I feel like he's trying to bait me yeah, into making he's fun got of something him. On you, hey, bro. Al, your hair looks great. Yeah, you look awesome, Al. Al, your hair looks absolutely you fantastic. Look phenomenal, oh, bro. I know yeah. I look good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, but uh, let's let's get this started. Okay, let's okay. get the podcast started. All right, got it. Um, we've got a massive story. We did a we had a great weekend, but we got a massive story that we got to talk about. Um, a fuck boy is getting canceled right now. I know, Ooh. dude. I know. A fuck boy is getting canceled right now. And I think we got to come to his defense. Of course we do. What I are think we, we got to come to his defense because West Elm Caleb, if you guys don't know who West Elm Caleb is. Legend. Let's go through the story of West Elm Caleb. Mm-hmm. Do you, who do you think is most versed on this story right now? I Mark, got, do you I have got, a good? I got some facts. Okay. Mark no break it, break it, it down. Break down the story of. West Elm yeah, Give us the yeah. facts only. Yeah, yeah, only the facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. the facts. We care about facts <laughs> over here. Okay, facts, no feelings. I was like, I'm going to do my best with this. I try to do the Digimon, Pokemon story, and I got cooked for it. Then so, I had I had Jideon. Pokemon. Pokemon. I had Jideon. Or what? Jideon. Yeah, Jideon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had him hit me up. He's like, y'all got that shit completely wrong. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Mark, like a true white man, forgot a whole N word that was said that started <laughs> the whole controversy. It's disputed. It's disputed. Come on, right? bro. It's disputed. I yeah. saw the video. Yeah. No, it's CGI. She dropping CGI, it. bro. CGI. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, it might be CGI. All right, fine. It's nice he didn't rap along with the N word, at least. I'm Team Pokimane now. Wait, 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 why is that? Wait, because white, Arabs white still got slaves, bro. <laughs> oh, okay. White people, we tapped out. We we're like, nah, that's just fucked up. But you go to parts of the world, them Arabs still got black slaves, bro. They can't be dropping that shit. Mm. Huh? Huh? Okay. How you I'm, feel I'm now? I'm Team Digimon. Team, team Digimon. Digimon. We're back. 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 Okay, little Pokemon walking yeah. around here. <laughs> I didn't know that she was. Uh, I mean, could Dove say it? There's no way. Nah. Come on, the guy wears too much cashmere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a certain amount of cashmere you could wear where it just stops you from saying the N word. Yeah, completely. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. What what amount is it, Al? One percent. One. Yeah, yeah. I think so. One <laughs> percent. Okay, it's God like bless. The, it's like the Seinfeld episode with the one dot on it. I've never seen it. <laughs> the best episode. I've never ever. seen it. Best fuck you. Fuck you, Al. Fuck you, Al. Fuck you. That's what he looks like. Black Kramer. Okay. Okay. So so uh 
So basically, break this, de- this story right, so down. So West Elm Kill is being called New York's uh, most eligible fuckboy. Yes, Ooh, that's the, the move over, Pete is. Davidson. Yeah. <laughs> West Elm Caleb. So basically, he, there's a woman that posted a TikTok and said, oh, we lost our son. God damn it. Oh, okay. Woman that posted a TikTok that said, uh, basically, it's like a joke, like, OMG, Caleb, if you see this, like, I hate you. And it's like her getting ghosted. And she's like, dating in New York is so hard. And then all these people in the comments are like, OMG, like Caleb from West Elm? And she's Mad like, what? people what are, are like Caleb about? from West Elm. Caleb so okay, Elm? boy. All these yeah. comments. Yeah. Okay, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See you out here building yeah. more than furniture. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now all these other girls are making TikToks like, yo, I dated this guy, West Elm Caleb. He said he was 6'4". Uh, we met on Hinge. He said that he was a furniture designer at uh, West Elm. Yep. This is a picture of what he looks like. Yep. Cutie. And, uh, yeah, we talked. We like went back and forth. Mm. He, you hate him, bro? He quote unquote. <laughs> you hate him? You see my hate him? You see my hate him? No other dudes could be good looking, man. No other dudes could be good looking. That's a little cutie for so You take a few inches off your hair, put it on his body. That's you. could literally be you. I can finish his beard, honestly. Wow. I'm just saying, bro. 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 I'm Fuck West Elm. You probably busy ghosting these bitches. Bro. Yeah, yeah. You ain't putting no fucking feet on West your Elm furniture. took me off my feet. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I hate them. But yeah, so basically he's all over Hinge. And now there's like over 25, 30 women that said, I went on a date with West Elm Caleb. And they all have the same story. They're like, yeah. we like met on legit Hinge. Legit exact same messages, copy pasted. Sent me the okay. same messages. Yep. He sent me the same Spotify playlist. Like, okay. hey girl, like yep. I love you. I sent this for you. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. I don't know which ones like met up with him and went on dates with him or not. Uh huh. He sent um, one girl dick pics twice he must have liked her yeah mm, what's so. he packing bro she didn't say <laughs> she didn't post that yeah, no 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 right. that's how you know yeah. it's the yeah. truth that's how you know it's the truth because if that shit was little we'd all been seen yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. but if it's big he's got the he's ottoman 6'4 everywhere got the mm. ottoman mm. Got yeah, the yeah. Yeah. put your yeah. feet up put your feet up girl uh, that's where one of them legs went yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit but yeah so okay. well, I get pissed if my girl sits on my West Elm couch I'm like yo sit the fuck up yeah right yo stand up damn bro okay keep going Uh, but yeah basically he would like talk to girls and then just ghost them and uh-huh. now all these girls are now mobbing him saying like yo fuck this guy he's the biggest fuck boy we hate West Elm Caleb and now it's gotten even bigger than that like all these brands are hopping on it like Hellman's Mayo said like yo West Elm Caleb like doesn't fuck with Mayo like shit like that like <laughs> people are just like now brands are jumping on it and now it's just become a meme TikTok tweeted about it is how big it got yeah. they went on a Twitter and tweeted about West Elm Caleb they had their own social media app yeah. and they went on a different yeah, one yeah. to spread the word <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah interesting okay so now it's just become a massive thing and the first conversation that comes up is like is this love bombing is he oh, being God. manipulative Come is he on, coercing bro, these women shit. you can't this was was so great you can't even be nice to women <laughs> you nice to a woman it's love bombing I looked into this it's apparently What's the precursor love to love abuse love bombing is that shit that Obama would do okay, uh, no, 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 at not, your many weddings not a, no <laughs> that's not that's not what it is what is that that's, oh drone strikes that's a drone, that's a drone strike, strike. Yeah, yeah. gotcha, oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. you know who can use the new furniture <laughs> your many weddings get on out there what's up Caleb Yemen is a good country we to gotta go, go to middle, middle east elm that's the next one <laughs> <laughs> West Bank Elm? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, go. So basically is like is what he did fucked up. The other thing that I will say that is important to note is that apparently he told some woman that he was exclusive with them. So he was like talking to all these different women, dating a bunch of them at the same time, mm. and telling specific ones like, yo, it's just you and me, like I love you. And we know that for a fact, I or that's what so. she said. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> Because that seems like a feeling, <laughs> not a fact. And sometimes you, can, sometimes people can misconstrue feelings as fact. You know what I'm saying? You really I never know. know. Factors that is what yeah. the victim claims. Yeah. I mean, yeah. how many days were they dating for? Do you know what I mean? How long did that candle burn? Like, <laughs> which, which one is it? Which one is it? Oh, oh my we're gonna have so much fun. Yeah, with I this. <laughs> did West Elm Caleb fuck up? Is he a fuck boy? Okay. Uh, is a is a he a fuck boy? boy? Yeah, deal. sure. Yeah. yeah, he's a the, fuck boy. I want to point out this. Uh, the ghosting shit, we've all done it before. I do think it's it's whack, uh, but we've all done it. 100% yeah, it's of a us. part of growing up. Exactly. And he's it is, 25. The only reason we do it is because we're all pussy. Yeah. Right? It's like we're just scared to like hurt somebody, so if we just ignore it, then we... That, and that's exactly what I said about the girls who ghosted me. They exactly. just need to grow up. You right, grow you up. Yeah. She just needs to grow up. Yeah, bro. Son, hey, if it's a type of rejection, I've probably been that shit. <laughs> probably. I don't know specifics. Block them shits out. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Say it from your chest. <laughs> well, I thought you really only dated your girl, to be yeah. honest with yeah. you. Yeah, because oh, yeah, the rest of them hoes rejected yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not for real. Are they just ghosting you up and shit? No, I don't know if I got ghosted. I definitely got rejected, for mm-hmm. sure, in many mm-hmm. different ways. Mm-hmm. I probably got ghosted. Yeah. Had to have happened. Yeah. Had to have. Uh-huh. If you ain't been ghosted, you ain't shit. You ain't mm-hmm. put yourself out there. Oh, you, you never been ghosted? Of course I have. Everybody been ghosted. Yeah. That's I'll be honest, I just said that. I might not have been ghosted. You can, hey, I, mean, I <laughs> promise you've been ghosted. ghosted. I'm too forgetful. <laughs> Super forgetful. I forget His memory him. be ghosting yeah. him. My go- His Facts. brain ghosts him. He'll look back at the text and be like, oh, I was supposed to meet up with her. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Yo, we're I forgot talk. about that. She never I do it all up. the time. You're welcome, <laughs> caller daddy. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm out good. here trying to make these women Come money. On. What can I do? You know what I mean? I got to fall in love. It is what it is. We all have other plans sometimes. Y'all never had other plans? God's you, will. You it's actually, God's will. To be fair, you ended up costing her quite a bit of money. No, I, I co- no, no, no that's no, no, on her. Quite no. a bit of money. Quite like eight figures. But I made the other caller, Daddy, yeah. a that's good true. amount. You that's should true. speak, Agash. You cost him a lot of money with Bitcoin, bro. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Cost me all this goddamn money. <laughs> hey, I be doing that sometimes. I ghosted texting you to sell it. <laughs> Fuck you, I right. forgot, Shit. bro. I forgot. You ever heard Eric Myers joke about ghosting? No, what do you say? He's like, they should not call it ghosting because ghosting is like when something comes to your house and fucks you all the time. Like, they should call it, <laughs> they should call it Sasquatching. Like, you <laughs> see him for a little bit and they just fucking run into the woods. Yeah, that's actually great because a ghost is going to terrorize you. Yeah. I don't it's think it's there all the word. time. Yeah. Um, Sasquatch is a new term. I guess. Mm. Yeah, because ghosts don't disappear. Yeah, they, they are with there. You around. They're always there, haunting you forever. That's what happens when we leave it up to women to make up the term. <laughs> <laughs> right? They ain't seen enough ghosts. movies. Yeah. yeah. You got to watch some paranormal activities. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so this guy, is it wrong what he did? What I think is really funny, it's actually really funny based on uh, just based on like the, the heels of our conversation last week when we were yeah. talking about like what is the proper way to get women, et cetera. Yeah. Like here's an example of a guy who's not a fucking crypto billionaire. He's not an athlete. He's not a rapper. The guy designs furniture for West Elm. Probably does okay, but not crazy. Yeah. Okay. Lives in Brooklyn. He's not living in some high rise fucking Manhattan apartment. You know what yeah. I mean? Or something beautiful in Soho with a mezzanine or roof access. Or really whatever. just wonderful okay, views. What? 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 Maybe, you know what I'm mean? a married man. Are you talking about yeah. you? I'm, what are you? I'm a married man. You're guys. a married man, dude. I'm a married man. Yeah, he happens to live in Soho. Some of us live in high rises, a couple floors underneath Derrick Rose. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. You know what I mean? It is what it is. And eventually you can move up and live above him. Yeah. Bounce basketball. It's actually impossible to live above where he lives. But that's not What are we even talking about? What are we even talking about, even? Right? <laughs> yeah. You know, just because it says penthouse doesn't mean there aren't higher penthouses. That's true. That's a good ass point. So there might be a higher penthouse. That's a good ass But point. enough about us. Yeah. I'm, I'm not talking about us. We're not talking about us. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, any hypothetical guy. Enough about those uh, incredibly successful people. <laughs> yeah. um, the point is, this guy is not what we think the ideal man. He is 6'4. Yeah. If you're 6'4, I mean, that's allegedly, fucking, yeah. that's helpful. Allegedly 6'4. Allegedly 6'4. You was a hater, I'm just saying, how can we know? <laughs> you was a hater, How do we know? Son. Stand up to my back. Get him in here, make him see the Stand up to my back. back. How you 5'11 with a Napoleon <laughs> complex? Yeah, really let's, let's go back to back. Let's go back to back. Me and West Don't Kill. I'm I'm secure with my shit. You 5'11 with a Napoleon complex, dog. I bet you he's bumping to dude, too. Probably get looked him up and down. 100%. 100%. He's probably in his fucking CrossFit class. Looking at his wife and shit. Yeah. Yo, let's tell. Yeah. You need to relax. <laughs> yeah, chill. Oh, okay, man. so <laughs> this is important. This guy was not being mean to these girls upon meeting them. Mm-hmm. He was doing the exact opposite thing mm-hmm. that we're told by like the pickup artists and shit, right? <laughs> He's love bombing. Yeah. You're so amazing. I made a playlist for you. It, it literally is terrifying what he's doing. Some could say he's simping. So he's simping. This guy simped himself according to the rules. This guy sent himself into having sex with half of New York City. That's crazy. Shit. It's Is crazy. it possible that so many people are following the pickup artist techniques mm. uh, that now, now the mm. unique way to hit Ooh. on a woman? Is to go from simp to pimp. Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's simp to pimping when you really think about Ooh-wee. it. <laughs> be nice to these girls. It's gonna be such a shocking experience for them. Mm-hmm. They're going to be like, oh, my God, maybe this guy, I really like him. Now, what I will say is quite interesting is these girls got on top of it. It became a TikTok trend, yada, yada, yada. What I think is kind of funny is if he was one of these millionaires, if he was a finance douche, if he was Drake, if he was uh, Odell Beckham Jr., these girls would be fine with being ghosted. They understand it. They understand it. Their ego could tolerate it. Mm -hmm. And what's funny about this, and this is the insulting thing, is they're not upset they got ghosted. They're upset that they got ghosted by a guy that they thought they were better than. Yeah. Oh, shit. That's the ego thing. It's going to say, I got ghosted by the guy who makes furniture for West Elm. 
Yeah. <laughs> the fuck are you doing? You're not a Drake. You're not. A, how dare you have sex with all of us and not be famous or successful yeah. enough? Restoration hardware, maybe. Ma- you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I need that? some real nice bougie <laughs> shit, yeah. right? Isn't that interesting? Like, it's it's an ego check, and I don't even know if the girls that are coming out saying it realize it. Let me push back on that one point, even though I don't, I think a lot of these girls are overreacting crazy, but a celeb wouldn't necessarily show a bunch of affection up top and be like, I love you, marry me, make a playlist. You so don't have to. I don't disagree with your general point, but that's one thing that I'm I'm not sure I agree so with. So they're reacting to the love bomb. They're reacting to the love bomb. Now, now I, I I don't want to seem rude here. Oh, go finish. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. I call. I looked into this love bombing thing. Yes. They call it the, a precursor to abuse. So then women are calling it abuse. Whoa. Now, if a guy does that and then abuses you, that's a fucking criminal. If a guy does that and doesn't abuse you, that's not abuse. A precursor is not the same. Every fight. The precursor is an argument. Every fist fight, the precursor is an argument. Uh, the argument's not a crime. What you call it manipulation. It's just an argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's all that shit is. is I'm being nice. I, I can't be nice. I don't know if it's any more manipulative than like uh, looking completely different in your Instagram pictures than oh. you do in real life. Oh. <laughs> is, it emo- oh. is it emotional oh. catfishing versus physical catfishing? Mm. Mm. Are we all? I think, uh, what is it? The great Chris Rock joke. You didn't meet me. You met my representative. Mm. right this is back in the day before photoshop and all these Mm -hmm. other things but like yeah everybody's on their best behavior at the beginning of a date yeah my apartment's clean just in case yeah right my apartment ain't always clean yeah right everything's clean i'm shaving up downstairs Mm. i took a shower really bruh you took a shower i take showers i'm shaved up i wash legs and feet now you got it no sometimes i wash my teeth come on you don't think that sometimes i think i might get my middle hammer (laughs) i might get a middle hammer toe sucked if my feet are washed bro and if it's not you're not gonna do that i love you call it a hammer i got the middle hammer bro i got the middle hammer if she says bring out the hammer what do you do just put your leg on the bring out that toe hey listen to this hammer everything's a nail is that the same what is this thing yeah. What is that saying? That was it right there. Was it? Yeah, okay. Yeah. You gotta hammer every problem's a nail. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what time it is. Fuck, it still don't make sense. <laughs> okay, but I guess what I'm trying to say is is that like to act like neither party is representing themselves uh completely authentically. Or to act like both parties are representing themselves completely authentically upon meeting, yeah. I think is unfair. It's completely and unfair. And straying from that is somehow abusive? No yeah, fucking Yeah, I, I hate the, just throwing the fucking word abuse. We're, we're throwing that out. Like, I need like, to see some real abuse. Honestly, like abuse <laughs> and like goat, we just throw out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like a motherfucker shoots a paper towel into a trash can. Goat! Mm. <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like every there's 50 goats. Goat is greatest of all time. Yeah. There's just one. Yeah. Right? So I, I agree. I think they were just overusing that shit, but but with this specific thing, damn, I fucked that word. Uh, <laughs> I, with this specific thing, with West Elm Caleb, I what I find it interesting is like it's very hard to, <laughs> it's very hard for people to just go. I guess he didn't like. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like it, he's either a fuckboy, manipulative asshole, and I maybe he did that to a few people, and that's fucked up. But some of y'all. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what's crazy? The it's one that's you. fucked up is the ones he said were exclusive. Yeah. If he and says it's exclusive, yeah. that's, that's lying. Fact. It's yeah. just lying. He's just being a liar. That's Dude. a fucked up shit. But one of the girls who went on TikTok to talk about that, she was like, oh, I was swiping. I met this guy. I'm going to go on a date and add him to, to my, my arsenal. arsenal. So she's saying, I'm about to add uh, him on, to all the other dudes I'm talking you to already. Girl. And he now you mad that he's yeah. dating other you people. You a fuck girl, he a fuck boy, you got fucked. Yeah. You are good enough for him. And that's, that's where your ego, for sure, your and ego thing lines bruised, up. Now, question. Yeah. Is, it, is it like unethical to go on the same date or to do the same kind of behaviors with the same girl? Is it unethical for, different girls, for, for different that girl girls. to wear the same skirt, Ooh. wear the same lingerie, wear the same sexy ass bra? Is now, it unethical? It's a playlist where he's like, yo, I made this for you. That's the emotional equivalent for us. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like make me the same bacon, egg and cheese you made a bunch of other motherfuckers in the morning. Is that unethical? Let's stop acting like we're not repeating tactics that we know that can be successful. Yeah. Right? If those things are kind and nice, what's the problem? Mm. Giving someone a playlist of music that you think they might enjoy? Yeah, you're doing it so you guys may build that connection, but I don't think that that's the worst thing a guy's ever done. It's not the worst. It's a little, slightly to be like, I made this for you, but hey, okay. Hey, I, it's slightly fucked up. This guy's Akash, going viral for this. Akash, is it wrong to take a girl to the same restaurant that you took another girl to? Nope. No. Hmm. Like, can you never repeat anything? Yes, yeah. And yeah. he could just be repeating the same tactics that he's had great dates on until he finds the one. 
Exactly. Yeah, and none of y'all were the one. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Like, and there's nothing wrong with not being the one. You're gonna Bruh. be somebody's one. Is West Elm Caleb an asshole, or are you just boring? Or did you just lie? did you just lie about how hot you were? Yeah, Bro, you. I mean, y'all know me. I dated a lot. I was out here in the world. Yeah, I met the one. Yeah, and the one was the one that I needed to be with, wanted to be with, locked in with. Mm-hmm. Okay, y'all just weren't the one. Mm. That just weren't the one. It is what it is. Yeah. That happens. Maybe he didn't appreciate you look bombing him, where you pretend you're super hot, and then he sees you, and you're like, oh, you're all right. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm wow. A, I'm a 6'4", better looking version of Mark. I don't have to settle for this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> got 6'4", Mark, better looking. Yeah. Can build furniture. I still got a growth spurt coming. Watch. Yeah, Watch. okay. I, I, yeah, still got okay. A bit. I got a little bit. Okay, I buddy. will say, I feel bad for him, only because I feel like, yeah, he's a fuckboy, but now he's just a... Like a representation of all the fuckboys. Yeah, every girl hates. of every piece of shit guy you've ever met like he's is getting, this guy. He's getting Karen'd, you know what I mean? Yeah. Ooh. Like, where now he's not, like, people are forgetting that he's like a person and they're just jumping on because he's the representative of a fuckboy. They're boy. trying to get him fired from his job. They're yeah. tagging West Elm in it. Like, West Elm's supposed to be like, all right, man, and during your time off, you should have been dicking down all these girls in New York City. I think we need to get rid of you. You're a danger. And West Elm probably going to fire this guy. That'd be fucked up. Because it's just like, oh, we don't need this Yo, shit. Yo, Caleb, if you get fired, we'll let you build all the furniture for our new studio. Hey, hey. <laughs> I mean that sincerely. I mean that sincerely. I we want will him, hire you. We want him on the podcast. I tried. I was DMing girls that he dated. <laughs> I was married. Andrew Schultz married in girls DMs. Like, Yo, free Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you I this gets some more playlist. pussy. Say oh, again? Yeah, I bet yeah, you yeah. this gets some more pussy. Because girls got to find out. <laughs> yep. All these girls are like, oh, shit, I want to see. <laughs> What's so experience. special? Yeah. And none of them hated on the dick. None of them hated on, like, so far as of what yeah. I've seen, like, none of them hated on the experience. I, they enjoyed being with him. Yeah. And they had a good time with him from what I see. So they're upset that he didn't share that. Yeah. Which is always an ego hit. That fucking sucks. It hits you. You're like, God damn it, son of a bitch. Right. This yeah. person didn't like me as much as I like them. Yeah. That's frustrating to take that to the Internet and try to trash somebody and like galvanize and get a bunch of other people together. Regardless, guys or girls doing that to the opposite sex is just fucked up. Mm-hmm. That's fucked up. You know, what's funny. He there's a text of him responding to one of the girls and he's like, yo, my life has been ruined. A lot of girls are just making stuff up that isn't true. Some of these girls are saying I didn't pay for dates. And it's like, that's the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the yeah. thing you're worried about. But son, how could he afford all these dates? That's, bro? that's saying, a lot of dates. Bro. West Elm's paying him good, bro. That's yeah, we'll saying. talk. Like, I remember back in the day when I was dating a lot and I was like, I think I got to start choosing. Yeah, it was pricey. It like restaurants. Yeah, more wisely, your date, like, top tier date. Yeah, yeah, like what are we doing exactly? Yeah. Like, do we need the appetizer? To eat? Like, yo, 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 yo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Grab some food before. Yeah. That's why I remember my pickup line used to be on the apps. The first one was, do you like tacos? Nachos. Oh, nachos. Yeah, yeah. I remember I tried so that. Cheap. I got ghosted. It's so cheap. <laughs> so that shit worked every no, time. That shit I literally was, tried it. It was 90% by a Latina? Seen, bro. <laughs> Seen. Latina girl. You know, it is fucked up. The girl was Spanish, and I, I realized that that's a little bit insensitive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Match with an Indian girl. You like tenderly chicken. <laughs> yeah, it's a little fuck up. I should have looked into that out. Yeah. That was on me. Fine, that line might work. That shit worked. It, that was years ago. It probably doesn't work now, but that shit used to work. Bro. Yeah. You All said it to me, and I was like, oh, fuck. This guy figures something out. Son. Everybody <laughs> likes nachos. They do. Who not knows? everyone. <laughs> <laughs> not everyone. This lactose intolerance fucking. Yeah, tummy. not everybody's a vegan at all. It's yeah. all this extra bullshit. But back but in the there day, was a time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolute banger. Free West Elm Caleb. That's all I gotta say. Yo. Give this guy's life back. Stop fucking piling on. Hey, off. we're offering you the forum. West Elm Caleb. Yeah, we need West Elm on. Or we want one of the girls that he dated. Maybe one of the girls he dated and West Elm together. Oh. Uh, that would be fire. Yeah, let's see if he is 6'4". Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we will measure him. That's why we're bringing him in, right? Yeah. That's why. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is going to be good. Okay. What else we got? Um, Fun weekends. We went out there. Oh, we did some yeah. shows up in, in Oxnard. And yep. then we went to the UFC 27. All right, guys. Infamous tour. We're on the West Coast, okay? We are in Sacramento this coming Saturday. Incredibly excited. Love performing in Sacramento. I think we have a few tickets left for that show. Go get them before those are gone. Then we're out there in Brea and then Coachella. Make sure you check us out in the casino out there in Coachella. That show is going to be absolutely wild. Then we're up there in San Jose. Go get that. And then we got a bunch more shows all across America. We got Birmingham, New Orleans, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, okay? And New York City 
and Atlantic City, waiting to find out some news about Canada, okay? We should have news by next week what the deal is with Canada. Obviously, they're terrified of this Omicron variant that kills nobody because that's just what Canada does sometimes. And they're trying to restrict the great people of Canada from having uh, an absolutely fantastic night of comedy. This is such a bummer. So we're going to figure that out. By next week, we'll have an answer for you on that. Akash, what you got? Yo, this weekend, I'm at the Comedy Vault in Batavia, Illinois. So anybody in the Chicago area, bring your ass out to that show. Next week, February 3rd through 5th, I'm in Richmond, Virginia at Sandman Comedy Club. SoCal, I'm coming to y'all at the end of February. February 20th, I'm going to be at Oxnard at Levity Live. February 23rd at the Improv in Irvine. February 24th. Fourth at the Improv in Ontario, February 25th in LA proper Hollywood Dynasty Typewriter Theater. Bring that ass through. March 11th, Vancouver Playhouse. I'm coming to Canada. And then March 18th through 20th, back home in Texas at San Antonio at LOL Comedy Club. April 1st and 2nd, still Texas, Austin, Vulcan, Gasco. And then, of course, April 22nd and 23rd, Royal Theater in Canada. We doing that show whether they let us in or not. I don't give a fuck. So get your tickets at AkashSing.com, and let's get back to the show. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second. Uh, listen, we know what's happening right now. Football's going absolutely crazy. Everybody's interested. Everybody's excited. You're going to gamble, okay? You're going to gamble on it, and you're going to do it in a way to make the most money, and that's with my bookie. Simple as that. They're going to match your initial deposit bonus up to $1,000. That's a free $1,000 that you get to gamble with, okay? All you got to do is use our promo code FLAGRANT. Simple as that. Free money for you to make even more money. MyBookie.ag, that's the website. Make sure you use our promo code FLAGRANT so you get that initial deposit bonus match and you show support for our show. It's simple as that. And it's not just football. You can gamble on absolutely anything over there. Go do it. Take care of it. Bet anything anytime anywhere with my bookie and make sure you get that initial deposit bonus doubled that's free money for you to make more money now let's get back to the show and yeah. then we went to the ufc 270 tell and, us about it okay i will say this uh the ufc has mastered the live show so I, good unbelievable and what i mean by that is here's the perfect example mm -hmm. al you've been to a boxing match before yeah live fight yeah let's say you're going to floyd mayweather fight when do the famous people come? Oh, it, right before the main event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what I was looking at when I was there. I was like, when are the famous people going to get in here and sit down? Because mm -hmm. famous people for boxing matches, they just come for Floyd. Yeah. They just come maybe for the last two if the last two are big fights, mm -hmm. but rarely. But they want everybody to see them coming in. Exactly. Yeah. They want to see them. you wearing the crazy outfits, et cetera. Yeah. You get caught. The famous people are here for the entire main card. Mm -hmm. hmm. Not just the last two fights. Probably the last like four fights yeah. or five fights. Mike Tyson. Tyson. Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade. They had the Nelk boys in there. Yeah. They Mark had Wahlberg. Johnny Knoxville, Mark yeah. Wahlberg. I mean, it was all of them were there. This whole section for them is there and it's fucking rampacked for the whole main card. And I'm looking around and we were all talking. And we're like, what is going on here? There wasn't a second of distraction. They had light show going on. They had music constantly. And the music was good. It wasn't bullshit. Like, you felt like you were at a concert. I think they had a DJ, like a live DJ that oh, was in the back, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Now, mm -hmm. you, he didn't have a booth where you saw him, but he was paying attention enough to like the people that he was entertaining. Mm -hmm. And the whole experience was fucking unreal. And I'm looking at this, and I'm like, this is what you get when you have one institution controlling it. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, when the fights were on uh, HBO or Showtime, there was different promoters that would end up doing those fights. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it was promoted at Don King. Sometimes it was Bob Arum. And they were in partnership with HBO. But it's harder to be consistent in the production you put out if you don't know what that producer wants to cough up for that production. Mm -hmm. When you are the UFC, you control every dollar coming in and out. And they have invested in making that live show a fucking unbelievable experience. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it was just so good, dude. It was just so good through and through. As someone who performs live for a living, I look at other live performances and I'm like, how are they going to keep these people entertained? It was amazing. Hmm. Like you didn't want, it, dude. Watching a basketball game sucks compared to it. <laughs> mm, sucks. <laughs> like I can't wait to leave and get a drink or something when I'm watching a basketball game, as long as it's not the fourth quarter. Yeah. I'm like, this is boring. Like whatever. Like unless yeah. it's a super heated playoff game or something. This was nonstop distraction stimulus, and it was the best live event in the fight game that I've seen. It's funny you say that because even watching, I had to tape the games because I was editing this weekend, the playoff games. Even watching, I was like, let's just fast forward to the fucking fourth. Let's just go. And like, football is masterful. And I'm 30 seconds ahead. every. Okay, there's a play. Let's go. I don't need to hear commentary. Yeah. And football You're is like, yeah. the most exciting to yeah. watch on TV. You it's red zoned TV. it yourself. Yeah, yeah I was like, let's just get to 
Yeah, and the games were fucking amazing. Yeah. But I was like, it's two quarters. Do I really need to watch the first half? I was like, eh. Yeah. And UFC, you're going to sit for the whole thing. And I was curious as you were talking, what would Mike Tyson say about a UFC live event versus a boxing live Interesting. event? Interesting. I would actually like to hear, as a fucking boxing fanatic that he is, yeah. is he still more entertained by UFC? If so, why? Yeah, that's a great question. I don't know. We got to get him on and ask him. And I, I don't know. Again, outsider. I think UFC, it seems like they do a great job of hyping up the undercards that were good fights. And I think boxing tries, but UFC seems to successfully do it. Like, but it's, it's hard because you're not as uh, invested in those people because you might not promote them. And oftentimes with boxing, it's two promoters working together. Mm -hmm. So each promoter has this, this list of fighters. Neither one of them wants to see them lose because one loss in boxing is the equivalent of like 10 losses in UFC. Right. right? So it's like, why would they work together to make sure it's a good fight? So then the other person that you get is some tomato can that your guy can beat up and that's yeah. boring. Every one of these UFC fights is competitive. Right. They know if they put on a good showing that they'll be back out there. And the UFC is invested in promoting every single one of their fighters that they have under contract. Yeah, and even if you lose, if you fight your ass off, you're valiant, then we'll, you'll get We'll watch love. you It'll again. be like a win. It'll be an emotional win. 100%. Huh. I, dude, it was... Yeah, I mean, what did you think, Mark? Yeah, I mean, insane. Like... You're captivated the whole time. We were there for what, four or five hours? Or, yeah. And there's only like an hour of action. Yep. Like all together between all the fights and all the rounds. Yeah. So it has like this really great capability of like you're sitting there, kind of like you can kind of hang in between. Yeah. Like there's something to watch. So you don't have to necessarily talk. You can like network. Yeah. And then the fight starts and it's just locked in. Yeah. Watching the most intense, like intense, like melee. Yeah. And then it just breaks up throughout the night. It's really awesome. And then the fans in Anaheim specifically yeah. were great. Listen, if it's a professional fight that doesn't have Mexicans Boo. don't even go <laughs> <laughs> after you're in an arena full of Mexican fans dude mm -hmm. this is what, what like soccer yeah. fans must get in Europe like that kind of like love connectivity Bro, in South America you like that the, maybe the most Bro. insane fan base of any yeah, sport ever the best yeah. so much fucking love so much past si se puede you can't <laughs> do it there's one of the fighters names was Brandon Moreno oh, yeah. so an entire <laughs> arena full of Mexicans is screaming Let's go, go Brandon! Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> right? And it's just the only time that that happens there's zero politics involved. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. it was just like, the energy was fucking unreal, man. You need, you need Mexicans or like a culturally in sync group of people that is just so fucking fervent as a fan. Yeah. Uh, as a, like a fan base uh, for a fight. And I'm sure like Filipinos are the same way with Manny Pacquiao or like Puerto Ricans when it was boxing. But like, that just makes it so much more special. Right. Like every go. Oh, speaking of that, like, um, how would you compare it to the Lucha Libre? Ooh, interesting. Oh, interesting. That was yeah, yeah, yeah. entertaining the whole way through. Yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's similar vibe, but like, there's just way higher stakes. Yes. You know, like you watch Lucha Libre, like just being able to sit back in your chair, like, oh, wow, this is fun. Lucha Libre, for everybody who's listening, that is the uh, like WWE, but in Mexico. Yeah. yeah and we went, the masks, we went for yeah, yeah. Uh, Andrew's bachelor parties. One yeah. event I didn't leave early. Yeah. But yeah, that that is great. <laughs> Wait, oh, yeah. Well, you the one event I didn't leave early. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you watch it and it's like, oh, yeah, I can just sit back and enjoy like this almost like soap opera type thing. Yeah. It's like a TV novella. But yeah. then if you go to the UFC fight, it's like you can't look away. It's I don't Lucha even know anyone. Yeah. It's literally Lucha Libre. If they could become bloody and unconscious, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like Lucha Libre has unscripted. to do, yeah, it's unscripted. It's like Lucha Libre has to do these like really cool uh, theatrical stunts. Yeah, uh, they have choreographed pieces. Yeah, exactly. A, a wrestling match. It's it's dance yeah. in a lot of ways, like yeah. this crazy gymnastics, and we would get really excited. I think based on the level of difficulty of those tricks. And that's yeah. the stakes. And those are the and stakes. people have famously died, like La Parca died doing a stunt in an actual match. Oh, I didn't know oh, that. Jesus yeah, Christ. I'm pretty sure. Holy shit. And so that's the stakes you're watching for. Exactly. Yeah. And now those stakes are baked into every interaction. Yeah. But it's just, they fucking get it, dude. And it was one of those things where like, like Mark and I are sitting there, we're watching it. And like, all we're thinking is like, oh, how can we incorporate this into, <laughs> how can we make our shows as entertaining? Through and through. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, what can we, and dude, one of the coolest things, I'm hyped right now on this, but one of the coolest things is really interesting. We're sitting, we're watching it, right? How are the seats? Does uh, it matter? Uh, phenomenal. They, they yeah, did a great amazing. job. They did a great job. And um, <laughs> we're, we're sitting, we're watching it, and uh, we look left. Now, if you're watching the octagon right here, we look left, and there's the, the door to leave the arena, right? And through the door, oh, yeah. you see an ambulance. It is oh, the shit. first thing outside the door. And it's not left there like intentionally to like, scare people watching, of course. It just so happened that it was right there when we looked over. But it's this beautiful reminder of the carnage 
that exists mm-hmm. in the ring. Like and the stakes. In the stakes, it's like this is so dangerous. The ambulance needs to be right outside the door. Right. Because yeah. if something bad happens, every second counts. Right. Mm. And I think they should do that shit on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just beautiful reminder. Like, this shit ain't a game. Yeah. Like, you think it's a game. Everybody's talking all that shit. You think it's WWE. There's a fucking ambulance there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And somebody's leaving a stretcher. My right. favorite part of the fight was that it wasn't any of the fighters, wasn't any like uh, anything that happened in the octagon. It was that one person had a better seat than you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So Shout out to fucking Shane Gillis, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, so, shit made me so happy. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Dude, dude. So I, I hope he talks about it on his podcast, but it was so funny. So we, listen, I rolled, I rolled deep. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I rolled deep no matter what, because I am very grateful, like, you know, where I am in this business is a product of everybody's work, right? Mm-hmm. So I want everybody to experience these right. things, right? Um. And, but I was so fucking tight. <laughs> so I told Joe, right. I told, I told Rogan, I was like, yo, we're going to, to the fight. We'll see you there. And he goes, yo, do you need me to get you uh, seats? And I was like, well, the, the UFC reached out and they want to get seats. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, what is it? Like uh, bite the hand that feeds you that kind of thing. Be disrespectful. Yeah. I want to be disrespectful. Seem I thought it was really grateful. nice for them to offer seats. You know what I mean? And we're coming through with five people. So it's nice to put it up. But then I hit him. I was like, I mean, but do you think yours are going to be better? Right? <laughs> yeah, right now, what he says to me, he goes, oh, I'm sure they'll be in the same area. And I was like, okay, cool. You, so you can't question that. Even if that sounds like there's going to be better seats than mine, you can't be like, yeah, but are they going to be better than my specific girl? <laughs> then you seem like a dick, bro. Yeah. I, we go, we, they give us five seats. I, we have two on the floor. Right. Right. And then there's three up on the, uh, like, perfect. It's like section 208, but it's actually like the middle it's like center court mm-hmm. if you're the basketball court and looking right in the ring. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Objectively yeah. better seat at 208. Definitely. Yeah, it, it was. Like yeah. I went and watched a few fights with you guys there and I was like, this is a much better viewing line, etc. It's right, right behind like all the VIP people, like all the announcers. You're looking at Johnny Knoxville's Rogan. head. You're looking at yeah. Tyson's head. You're looking at everybody coming. Yeah. It was fucking great. On the floor, we were looking up half the time at the screens. At the screen. Yeah, it is. Just because of the angle and everything. Now, the energy on the floor is really cool. You're walking right up to the gate. You're saying mm-hmm. hi to Bruce Buffer right at the gate. You know, Rogue and DC, they're right there. You're saying what's up. It's just, it's awesome. But I saw fucking Shane. I'm like, this motherfucker. Shane is like basically coaching the fighters. <laughs> <laughs> like Shane could spit into the ring from his yeah. chair. One hundred percent. Like if he if he laughed hard drinking a Bud Light, he would spit the uh, Bud Light on so the happy. fighters. One hundred percent. Right. Makes me so and happy. I didn't know where he was. I was like, because Rogan said he was there. I was like, yo, where are you? And then I just saw his dumb head fucking pop up. <laughs> He literally pops up from like right behind one of the cameras. Like he's so close. Yeah. He's so close. And I was like, this motherfucker, dude, I should have cooked the goddamn tickets from Joe. I walk up to go say hi. I go up. I'm like, yo, come to the banister. I walk up. He walks over and a security guard goes, sir, you can't bother the people on this side. Of the <laughs> Bro, Shane, we all kind of dressed up. I was up. furious, we, bro. We dressed up. Shane's wearing like a hoodie and like a Pennsylvania shipping solutions hat. <laughs> like literally, like he looks like he's there to fix the ring. Like, the best, <laughs> dude. He's like, yeah, the fence broke hero. a little bit. Dude, it was so funny. And I hope he talks about this on his pod, but like the night before he got to hang out with Nate Diaz and his boys. Oh, like, shit. Like they just went out. Oh, shit. I hope he talks about oh, He probably pod. fit in perfectly. Bro, the stories are hilarious. <laughs> the stories are fucking hilarious. But uh, I hope he talks about it. And then we went and grabbed some dinner afterwards. That was fun. And then I drank too much red wine and I just uh, violently vomited at an airport bathroom for fucking. Yeah, what? So all I know is we were trying to set up a Zoom call to meet about what we're going to talk about today. And then Andrew goes, I just threw up everywhere in the airport bathroom. (laughs) And then I talked to him an hour later and he's like, Yeah, there's literally vomit coming out of the sides of the stall into the other stalls. (laughs) It's like the the shining. I threw up. (laughs) Just fucking red wrong. It was out of the elevator. It really was. It was pure red, a little bits of broccoli, projectile (laughs) vomiting, right? And I understand why people like put their face right over the toilet because like I was vomiting from a standing position. So it was just going everywhere. What the everywhere. fuck did you think you was going to happen? I, I, could, I don't know. I have a penis. So. I pee directly in it, but it came out like a girl's pussy. Like it Jeez. was just like how girls pee. It just splattered everywhere. <laughs> I saw both shoes on either sides of the stalls no. next to me. Sea walk out of the way. No. <laughs> 100%. I was vomiting all over both of their feet. Oh and the beautiful gosh. thing about throwing up on someone is they can't attack you because they'll just get even more throw up on yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. So I just stood there fucking throwing up. No. I ate, yeah, I ate some bread. Vala got me a bagel. And uh, and some toast and I and I and I rallied and I got Jesus onto that flight. Christ. And yeah. Then you took a six hour flight. And then I took a six hour flight. Oh, that Jeez. was before the flight. <sighs> right before the oh, flight. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely brutal. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, it was absolutely brutal, yeah. What was the fight of the night, by the way? Whew. The actual fight of the night or, or our, our pick? Our pick, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I am curious about Francis, too, because he's a homie, and I heard he wasn't supposed to win, and he won. Yeah, the Francis gone fight was really... I, I wasn't literally just read Twitter, and then people yeah. were like, oh, he won. And I was like, okay, bet. Yeah, he won. I thought he won on points. Uh, I thought gone was really good, but what Francis did is, and I didn't realize this, is that he had this element, but he basically just took him down. Mm. Like, yeah. he was getting outstruck, and then he just said, I'm bigger than you. Yeah, huh. I did not exceed like, oh yeah, Francis is gonna wrestle the yeah. wrestler. Like yeah. Don has a wrestling like uh, martial arts background. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, he would do like Muay Thai. Yeah, I think exactly. he had like Muay Thai fights and actually. So like, stuff. if I'm going to the ground, I don't want to go to the ground with this guy. But yeah, Francis goes, I don't care, Bro. and just leans on him, mm. leans on him, and just, I mean, it was really, it was really interesting to see him switch that gear. And it was funny because like the day before, there was a video came out with a uh, DC, mm-hmm. you know DC, yeah, yeah. Daniel Cormier, and. uh Daniel Cormier is like always teasing the fighters when he's always like pretends to wrestle. Like he's yeah. like a real gym dude. You can yeah. tell, you know, it's like you ever go to the boxing gym and a guy starts like shadow boxing mm, yeah. for you. Like okay. that's just their communication uh, skills or whatever. And he did that. And then uh, Francis kind of like blocked the takedown and France and uh, DC is like, oh, he's a wrestler now. He's a wrestler now. And then literally the next day wrestling yeah. is what wins him that fight. Huh. Yeah. And dope. this is an interesting thing because he's the UFC champ without any contract to fight anymore. Mm. Yeah, it's fascinating. So we could see the UFC not renew his contract and then a UFC champ get stripped of their title for nothing more than not being able to have more uh, fights on a contract. Yeah. So he technically didn't really lose it in the ring. Mm. So even if he's not fighting anymore, that's still the real UFC champ. Oh, yeah. wow. And he wants to box. Yeah. Uh, he, wants a, he wants the big money fight yeah, with Tyson Fury. Mm-hmm. And. Of and of course, the UFC is going, I don't want to let my fighters be able to just go box whenever they want, because if mm-hmm. I give them that contract, then they're all going to ask for the same thing. Right. Now, I'm sure, just like what happened with Floyd uh, uh, you know, and Connor, I'm sure if they made a big money fight and the UFC got a piece of that, a significant piece, which is what happened with Connor, that they could work something out. But there was a lot of stakes on this fight. Yeah. He yeah. loses. He has no negotiation. Yeah, leverage gone. Oh, shit. Yeah. But he did the damn thing. He did the fucking damn he thing. He is like, I mean, he's just got to be pound for pound, like the baddest man on the planet. Undeniable, right? Like insane power, size, reach, like fight IQ was good. Yeah. Like, uh, is Fought there- with a torn MCL completely oh, yeah. and Holy strange shit. ACL. Happened oh, a few right. weeks ago. And he's like, I don't want to pull out of the fight. And I noticed, I saw him wearing these like knee things. Yeah. And I thought something was really smart. If you hurt one of your knees. Yeah. Yeah. If what? you hurt one of your knees and you put a knee brace on just one, if oh, I'm that guy's fighting you, go after that knee. I'm attacking that knee. If you hurt one of your knees and put them on both, I'm going, ah, oh, yeah, maybe his knees are sore from training, but there's not actual significant damage yeah. to mm. one of them. Mm-hmm. And even then, you might forget even during the fight which one it is. Mm. Fuck. So I thought that was a pretty smart tactic. Yeah. What a hoss, dude. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then it was insane watching that fight directly after Brandon Moreno. Yeah. Like, going from super heavyweight, biggest guys in the fucking, you know, institution to, yeah. like, the small, or from the smallest guys to the biggest guys. Yeah. Like, seeing the fight style change. Completely. Yeah. Really yeah. interesting. Yeah, it was just, it was great. It was, it was a lot of fun. And I'm curious to see what happens. I hope that he is able to fight Tyson Fury. Yeah, I think a knockout would have really propelled that fight further, but I mean, I, I mean, just I would love to. Uh, he love Francis, but does he have any chance yeah. against Tyson Fury boxing? I want to say no. The one that didn't you call Tyson Fury the greatest heavyweight ever? I think. And Francis Ngannou is going to win. You've never seen Francis Ngannou fight. I've also in a never seen ring. Francis <laughs> Ngannou fight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, it was interesting. Ben Uyeda had an interesting story. Our buddy Ben, we talk about on this podcast a lot. We love Ben. Uh, he came with us and. He posted on his story of the 7 billion people on the planet. Mm-hmm. These two guys are the best at fighting. That's crazy. Or like the most dominant fight or something like that. Like can beat up every, those two guys in the ring that we saw of all the human beings on the planet can fuck up the most people. Every single one. Now, of them. that's was, pretty crazy. Vol was saying he was going to put John Jones in there. But we don't know. John Jones has never fought at heavyweight. He says John Jones could take both of them. He, he mm. says it, but so far... We don't know, and like we saw with, like we saw with uh, Izzy when he went up in weight and fought Jan, mm-hmm. and like we've seen so many times when boxers go up in weight, it is difficult. Yeah, it is very. It doesn't matter how incredibly technically nobody's more technically skilled than Izzy. Yeah, but there's a certain point in time where forty pounds. It's exactly what you said. Francis did to 
uh, Gan- Gan. Gan that uh, that's what happened to Izzy. The guy just leaned on him. Forty pounds is forty pounds, bro. Yeah. Yeah. But it was it was pretty. It if was pretty John rough. Jones came back, would Francis not go box, and would he be like, all right, here's a super fight, I can make my money here? I think the big money fight is Tyson Fury, and I hope that they work it out. It'll just be fun for the fans. I think the thing that they need to do is make sure it's less rounds. Eight uh, round, yeah, okay. you know what I'm yeah, saying? Twelve is crazy. Twelve is crazy. Twelve is is. See, it's not even going to be fun. Eight rounds of heavyweights, even if one of them can't fight, they're just fucking slugging each other. That'd be fun. I think that that's what we might see. I think when you when there's less rounds, you have uh, far more uh, time to exhaust your cardio. Yeah. Because you're not worrying about carrying it out. Right. But you're not saving something. Yeah. Right. Like a six round fight. Like if you look at amateurs, three round fights, they're going fucking crazy. Yeah. You know. So I would love to see it. We'll see what happens. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because I got to make sure your dicks are hard, okay? We're getting into deep winter right here. It's cold outside, and you might need that extra push to keep your lady happy. Ladies, you deserve it. You absolutely deserve it. You deserve winter dick too, okay? I know you might be uh, growing out that bush a little bit. Make sure that your coochie's nice and warm. And you know what? We don't care because we're going to... We're going to get through that nice little forest. We're going to cut through the thicket. And <laughs> uh, we're going to give you the greatest dick you've ever had in your life. And that's with Blue Chew. Blue Chew is the truth. Okay. It's the one we use and the one that we make sure our women are satisfied with. Simple. Same ingredients inside Viagra Cialis. But this is the chew. And you're going to get it for free. All you got to do is go to bluechew.com. Okay. Use the promo code flagrant. And you know what? You're going to get it free. You just got to pay $5 shipping. That's it. Bluechew.com. Use the promo code flagrant and you pay that five dollar shipping. You're gonna get the best dick of your life for free. Now let's get back to the show. All right, what else we got? All right, can we talk about these slutty MMs? Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes, let's talk about so these recently, candy coated sluts. Okay, that's a lot. But the, the Mars Wrigley <laughs> Company came out and said that they're rebranding Milk the M&M. in her mouth, not in her hand. <laughs> Damn, boy. The I M&M see you. logo as well as the M M&M M characters. Wait, Mars Wrigley? Yeah. Are the owners? Yeah. And yeah, their products are doing the worst. What like do you mean? Mars, nobody eats. No, like a you Mars eat bar. Mars. Snickers you eat Mars is Mars. Bar. But it's no, Mars, but they Mars own. specifically. Yeah, the yeah. Mars bar, nobody eats. Yeah. Butterfinger, nobody eats. But Mars, and then Wrigley, like the, the Wrigley gum is done. <laughs> like nobody's getting 25 cent gum. They don't know there's things. What I'm saying is they're not taking care of the original brands that they built. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, they just moved on to the new heat. That's they just moved on. They just yeah, left yeah. it. Sluts they are. Yeah. <laughs> That's some slutty behavior. Trifling ass chocolates. Bro. I'm just saying, like, it makes sense now. It completely makes sense. So they came out with the new M&M's and okay. it's, got, it's got people pissed off. So you can see just based off the top, that was the old design. Okay. So there's just like some minor changes. The yellow M&M was wearing kind of like trash ass, like Keds. And now he's got like ones, I think. Okay. Fire. Um, the orange guy is like slightly less anxious, but still concerned. And uh, the brown M and M still kind of got the same thing. You can see she went from less of like a stiletto, kind of like a chunk here, like more like a kitten. And heel then leggings. Almost. Yeah, yeah, got the leggings. And then the biggest one is the green M M&M and M that everyone's pissed about because she had them boots, them sexy ass boots. Yeah, she's yo, she was a joint, bro. She kind of was. Yeah, and, yo, green uh, M M&M and M was pure sex, dog. All they did was make them not white. <laughs> what do you mean? The oh wow. Skin. Yeah, they were all white yeah. before, and then they just took away the color of their skin. They sure. just gave them leggings. You don't know what they are. Mm. But then boots, that green m M&M, and Was a green m M&M and a girl or Russell Brand? <laughs> 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 Which, and now they just do it leggings and then just some sneakers. Exactly. Yeah. So they're basically removing the gender or just trying it's to make the them sexuality. less sexual. What the company said is that they're trying to make the, the characters and the mascots more representative of their consumer base in a post-COVID world. Uh, more positivity associated with it. Like the yeah. red Eminem, who was always a bully to people, is now less so. Less angry, more accepting, less of a commercial, gotcha. less funny. All why, don't, why don't they just do that? Why do they have to, why don't they have, to have this big rollout? Let's just do it. Nobody cares. Because then you can get some PR and remind people that they want to eat M&M's. This is advertising. So that's what this is. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you want to know the why, we can get to that also. But yes. the why is more interesting to me because at Mars is currently in a child slavery lawsuit in what? West Africa. Yeah. So, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So, wait a minute. Just clapping there. <laughs> it's just such a funny redirect. Like, yeah. that's such a, kudos to you guys for redirecting from child slavery to, yeah. hey, we're t- taking the heels down on the brown M&M. Yeah. So apparently in like West Africa, like Mali, uh, fucking uh, Ivory Coast, Burkina Faso, yeah. Mars, Nestle, and Hershey pledged to stop using child labor and they haven't been able to. Do- How are they it. using the child labor? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? What if they're taste testers? <laughs> 
I mean, what a that, great that job. That could be a good job. If actually, you're right? a child labor worker and then you have to come to work and just eat like almond M and M's, you have to eat peanut M and M's. If you yeah. have to eat the pretzel ones, the caramel ones, like you got to see which M and M's the sexiest. That's a fun job. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, so many people I believe in those countries are starving to death, and for a living, yeah. you actually get to taste things, you get to eat things. Uh, I mean, this is that would that would be good. Actually, phenomenal. I'm, I think they're just mining cocoa beans out of the earth, though. Oh, yeah, it's a little different. It's a little different. Yeah. So they're getting the cocoa. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Uh, Any reason you got to use kids? Are their hands more able to? Is <laughs> yeah. there a, at least a logical reason? Or they love chocolate the most, and they can just sniff it out. Uh, and also because of how like <laughs> impoverished the areas are, a lot of parents will just be like, "Yo, my kid's fourteen. We're poor. Go to these guys, and these like basically like tra- traffickers will take a bunch of kids, go farm all these cocoa, mm. say, "Hey, you're all nineteen now, and uh, send the money back to their parents." Wow. Yeah. So a little dicey. But all and I say, they're doing this, I imagine, for many different brands. They just happen to be buying the nuts. Yeah, exactly. Or the chocolate from yeah. this place. Exactly. So what we're hoping is that they do the same due diligence that like we want Apple to do, where we're like, well, find out where you get your cobalt from because yeah. the cobalt mine could be mined by slaves. Yeah. Got you. But they're just go, who who has chocolate for the lowest price? Here. Yeah. They probably get their chocolate from a thousand different places around the country. Yeah, around and the that's globe. why it's like Nestle, Mars, and Hershey. Mm. Now, if they own the mines, that's where shit gets fucked yeah, up. Yeah, I'm not sure if they do or don't. That'd be wild. So all of a sudden, in a mine, a field? Yeah, I don't know if it's in a mine. Chocolate mines, dude. <laughs> what? Is there a chocolate mine? Yeah, it's fucking where you get chocolate. Pick and fucking chocolate that. mines. Tell me with the light on it. Hundred percent. What do you mean? Tink, tink, Have tink. you seen a chocolate mine? Yes. Where are they? It's all different parts of the uh, Africa. No, you've never America. seen Willy Wonka, bro? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And how do they Those get it caves, out? caves, mines. He was using was... child labor. That's fucked up, bro. Willy Wonka. They were Oompa Loompas, not children. Oh, that's we my bad. I didn't know the we don't know. All right. Are we sure? <laughs> we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. We have no fucking clue. I mean, they were slaves for sure. Yeah, he had chocolate slaves. <laughs> yeah. Very different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> different type of chocolate slaves, but <sighs> those people are actually chocolate slaves. But now, yeah. despite the fact that they're trying to squash like this massively big like human rights issue with just like some benign uh, marketing, mm-hmm. uh, all like the media pundits have jumped on it. The funniest. Of course, we don't care about real things. Let's care about M&Ms. Yeah, yep. Exactly. The funniest and the best one it was Tucker Carlson. Yeah, he this went in. so good. He this went guy in. had bars, okay? This like, guy's like, 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 you know. it. The other big change is that the brown M&M has, quote, transitioned from high stilettos to lower block heels. Also less sexy. That's (laughs) progress. M&Ms will not be satisfied until every last cartoon character is deeply unappealing and totally androgynous. Until the moment you wouldn't want to have a drink with any one of them. That's the goal. (laughs) When you're totally turned off, we've achieved equity. Uh, They've won. Man. They've won. When he's turned off by cartoon candies. He's really trying to fuck an Eminem, I think. Yeah. And then this is another clip. Knowledge and embrace his anxiety. And actually, if you look at him, the orange Eminem does appear very anxious. Maybe he doesn't like all the ugly new shoes he sees around him. Maybe he liked the sexy boots. Maybe (laughs) the orange Eminem is a secret sexist himself. We don't know. We're going to let NPR get to the bottom. All right, yeah. so what's your take? Eminem rebrand. I'm just relieved because this whole time we've been wondering about Tucker Carlton's sexuality and it actually makes the most sense. This guy fucks cartoons. Yeah. Uh, it, doesn't he look like a guy who would fuck like anime, anime porn? Like jerk off yeah. anime porn? Yeah, yeah, All yeah, of a sudden it adds up. You yeah, wouldn't yeah. fuck anime porn if you could? I mean, he'd oh. probably be the best. I don't, you think so? Yeah, yeah 100%. Because it could be anything you want. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or just what's there. Like, you wouldn't take down Mrs. Incredible and just get behind that back. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Blah, no, mm. of course. 100%. Mm. Marge Simpson? Marge Simpson? Mm. No chance. You've seen those Marge ads, Simpson. right? You've seen those ads? No. Nah, was she stacked? Yeah, like bro. She's super stacked, stacked, yeah. stacked yeah. right? The mom from Family Guy. you seen those ones? Oh, uh, yeah. She, she had a super fatty ass, yeah. and the crazy weight. dumper. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. What do I think about this? Oh, I just hate this shit. But now I know that they're doing it on purpose. They're doing it so that we talk about it. Yeah. I can't really hate it that much because it's working. Yeah, mm. it's what is it called? Um, uh, cancel marketing. There's another one. Outrage marketing. Mm. It's like do something that people are going to get outraged by. And just like you said, you're like, you know what? It's fucked up that they're changing the colors of uh, of uh, M and M's or they're changing the characteristics of the. So you brought up Mars bars. When was the last time anybody ever heard anyone talk about a fucking <laughs> Mars bar not, in the variety pack? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's the worst one. I it's think the they phased it out last year too. Yeah. I've Milky never Way, Mars sure. Mars Bar, get out of here. Do you think it's racist that they don't have a white M&M? They do have a white M&M. Which one? Not a logo, not a spokesperson. Which one's white? I the mean, anxious it, one. It's more racist than that. <laughs> 100%. Why, why is, is that the Jewish guy? <laughs> yeah, that's the Jewish That's one. a Jewish M&M. Wait, what is inside the orange M&M? 
<laughs> this is also int- if it's a pretzel. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's point. That's are point. they making me thirsty? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Let quote, me find out that M and M's are actually anti-Semitic. <laughs> mm. Whoa! And they're attributing certain characteristics to these M and M's so that they can be racist, homophobic, and anti-Semitic. What was that? That was my bad. I was about to. I was about to show you how sexy this green M M&M and M used to be. Okay, bust it. So this is. I think the biggest shame of the whole thing is that it feels like they're slut shame in the green Eminem, who ah. historically has always been kind of a piece. Introducing Raspberry Almond Eminem's Premium Chocolate with luscious almonds and the sweet taste of raspberries. Fix your heart's desire in chocolate. Whoa. <laughs> All the boys just bricked up watching this. Yeah, it does. And now she's, she's wearing like huh. fucking Converse. Yeah, that was fire. Yo, this was Tucker Carlson. <laughs> yeah, he, he had it right, bro. This yeah, was Tucker a had it right. Sexy yeah. woman with a shapely figure. This yeah. was a woman that was proud of her body and she made it work. And you are gonna shame her. How dare you? Yeah, that's Ooh. disgusting. How dare you? You think that's slut shaming? Disgusting. Her. Slut yeah, shaming. It's, it's, it's slut shaming. It's anti body positivity. Mm. She's not. She's not a thin woman. She's round. She's that's circular. Point. And she's proud of her curves. Mm-hmm. All curve. She's proud of her curve. <laughs> her curve. Yeah, they fucking got us again, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> they got us a goddamn. So are you gonna stop buying M Ms? No, I just love them. <laughs> I just love them. I love They're them. So I good. love them. They're so They're good. They're so great. Peanut M Ms. I feel healthy. It's like my healthy snack. Like I won't eat a I won't eat a Snickers at the hotel, snack. but I think peanut M Ms are healthy <laughs> because <laughs> it's yeah. just all nuts. What about protein? almond? Almond is oh, the way to go. The best. Almond is the best. The almond M and M, nothing's better. <laughs> nothing's better. Chocolate covered almonds, Fuck you. greatest <laughs> snack. <laughs> greatest snack. I don't care what they are. Chocolate covered almonds. They could be anxious. They could be sluts. <laughs> you know what I mean? They could be wearing heels. They could be wearing flats. It doesn't matter. I'm eating them all up. Why don't you? Why do you disagree, Al? You have a problem with the the. M M&M choice? Oh no, I'm a pretzel M&M. guy. No, no, which no, no. one are you gonna Just take? Just the way down? he was talking about M M&M. and M. Would you smash like? green or or the brown one? I had both. Double time? Yeah, and that little anxious one too. Get on over here. <laughs> Get on over here, sweet pie. You know what I'm saying? That's I like lot. the red yeah. one. Yeah. So this chick for the Rolling Stone put out an article. Okay. And the title of the article is Let the Green M M&M and M be a nasty little slut. Yes. <laughs> I like that. That's the title. This is the last paragraph here. The Green M&M, the Green M M&M has spent decades building her brand as a horny, sexy bitch. For what? <laughs> for her creators to give her Larry David footwear in the name of feminism? For Mars Regal to give themselves pats on the back and big fat fucking raises the next corporate retreat in Palo Alto. Guess what? The Green M M&M M is a feminist. And she's a dirty slut. We are real. We exist. And we refuse to tolerate this disgusting attempt at erasure. We are given so little and we have tolerated so much. Let the green M&M keep her go-go boots. Let her get blackout and suck dick in the bathroom at Acme on a Wednesday. This is what we want. This is what we deserve. This is what she deserves. Who's this? Widely specific. Bro. Yeah, who's this? Also, the bathrooms at Acme aren't great for getting dick sucked. <laughs> what yeah. you got sometimes, though. Yeah, that, uh, there's different places. The Smith, yes, but, <laughs> Wait, what? but not Acme. <laughs> Why not Acme? What the hell is Acme? I thought that was that Coyote Roadrunner shit. No, 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 no. No, <laughs> yeah. no, no Acme is a place in New York. Oh. Yeah. Um, but, uh, oh, this is interesting here. What does she look like? Who's this girl? E.J. Dixon. Great writer. Ooh, quite Fantastic. Yeah. She quite should write name. one of them, like, novellas. Yeah. <laughs> novellas? Yeah. Novellas or whatever. What are they called? Uh, novellas? Yeah. <laughs> she should write one of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's great. I was like medium brick just reading that. Yeah, right? A little yeah. bit. All right, guys. We're going to take a break for a second because I'm going to tell you about the best underwear you ever wear in your life and the last pair of underwear you will ever wear after wearing them. Simple as that. I have not worn another pair of underwear since I started wearing Culprit. Okay. Simple. I mean, I cannot tell you. By far, the best pair of underwear I've ever worn in my entire life. Comfort, check. Security, check. Cradles the testicles well, check. Okay? Looks, check. Absolutely amazing. You take those off, your girl's going to go fucking crazy. Culprit is the truth, the best underwear on the planet, and here's the thing that we're going to do for you. You go to culpritunderwear.com and use the promo code FLAGRANT, you're going to get them for 25% off. Now, I can tell you a bunch of facts about the underwear, okay? Uh, It's eco-friendly. It's made uh, locally by workers earning a living wage. Fabric is 95% micromodal, which is made from beech trees and uses 20 times less water than cotton and yada, yada, yada. It doesn't matter. 
It's comfort first, and they're the most comfortable pair that you will ever wear in your life. Just go check them out. Try them, okay? They also got the lady boxers for the ladies. Make sure you go get them, ladies, as well. Enjoy it. As a matter of fact, get them for your husband. Get them for your boyfriend. Steal them from him. Culpritunderwear.com. Use the promo code FLAGRANT. Get 25% off. Now let's get back to the show. Okay. Enough with these M&Ms. Can we talk about the greatest weekend in NFL history? Yes. Holy shit. truly was. It truly was. I wish I had nothing to do this weekend so I could just fucking watch every game and do jack shit. Mm. Every single game was good. Is Tom Brady Jesus? Tom Brady, boy, they got him. Yeah, he's he might. You know what? He lost, but I think the Packers losing and Aaron Rodgers losing showed us how good Tom Brady is. How great Tom Brady is. Mm. Because Aaron Rodgers lost to a the San Francisco 49ers, who were a good team, but they like they legit squeaked into the playoffs. They barely got in. And the Packers were at home. In he the had, snow. In the yeah. snow, which, to be fair, does normally hurt a good quarterback. And I think if Rodgers leaves Green Bay for, like, a dome, he'll be on another fucking level even than what he already was. But you're still at home. And he had, with five minutes left, he had two drives to seal or win the game. Mm. Didn't do it either time. Went three and out the first time. I think three and out the second time. And that's how San Francisco won. So Green Bay's up 10-3. to three. They go three and out. Aaron Rodgers misses a wide open receiver, tries to force the ball downfield. They have to punt. Punt gets blocked. Return for a touchdown. 10 all. Then he has another drive. This is his time at home to seal the win. Let's fucking, hey, I'm talking cash shit about Joe Biden. I'm doing interviews on ESPN saying I'm canceled. This is your time to fucking do it. And then he flops again. Ugh. And then San Francisco gets the ball back, and Jimmy fucking Garoppolo drives down for a game winning field goal. And Aaron Rodgers lost. Talked all the shit in the world, took on everybody, and fucking lost at home. Mm. The Bucks were down 27 to 6. Tom Brady's offensive lines getting their asses kicked. All of his receivers are hurt except for one who's playing hurt. The other two are gone. A B left the fucking team. His other guy, Chris Goodwin, or Godwin, really good. He's out for the year, torn ACL. Brady fights back, ties the fucking game. And even though the defense had forced a lot of turnovers, they blew a lot of coverages. And at the very end of the game, uh, they blow a coverage and then Matthew Stafford. Completes the pass and they went on like the last. It'd be your own people, bro. I know. It'd be your own fucking. It'd be your own. That's why he's Jesus. I'm (laughs) the fucking Bucks defensive coordinator is Judas, bro. He Judas. No, that safety is Judas. He got destroyed in two straight plays by the same guy by Cup. Cooper Cup. Yeah. So Cup killed him on that one play. But you can't single cover this guy. Well, well, this how good he is. Yeah. Odell Beckham's not even complaining about not getting the ball. Because oh, wow. he's like, this guy and is the truth. He's the truth. And him yeah. and Stafford got a crazy connection. Odell Beckham just over there getting touchdowns when he gets them, and it's all good. Mm. He hasn't once complained about not getting the ball. He played with Jarvis Landry in Cleveland, who's a beast, and he's here, and he's like, hey, it this guy might be is. MVP. He gets the ball. Is he that good? White wide receiver that White good? White wide receiver. This is shocking. Fucking great. Baller. People are talking about him as MVP. She said Julian Edelman. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. 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 Don't do Wow. I remember uh, Calvin Johnson and then like probably Jerry Rice way back in the day or something, probably. But yeah. this guy is fucking incredible. And he just beat Brady. That's how good he is. He beat Brady. I mean, dude, Brady did everything, man. I watched the end of it and I was screaming on the plane. Yeah. Oh, my God. And like, I mean, it was just unbelievable. I couldn't believe when Brady tied the game. Also, great play call. To yes. tie the game on a the fourth running. down rush. Leonard Fournette had a great game. But if great play call. Tie the game. I won fear. With most of these games, oh, they left him too much time at the 14 end. 14 seconds. That was the Chiefs game. 13 seconds. 13 oh, seconds. how many? How much time did they leave? I want to say it was like 40 seconds for the Rams, something like that. Yeah. It was like 40 seconds. It was a little bit more. A minute, maybe. It was, it was more time. 
But the Chiefs game is legitimately the best playoff game I've ever seen in my yeah, life. I, I need you to go over five. the Chiefs game because I missed the Chiefs game. Okay. But so, just to, to wrap up the Tom Brady discussion, it was like, it's just such a letdown that he did exactly what he needed to do yeah. to maintain his legacy. Yeah. And this bum safety got ripped twice. Like, first of all, how do you even design a defense that allows the best receiver in the league, the MVP, to go one-on-one with your safety? That's what everybody's Not saying. Not even the fucking corner. So here's the thing that you, when you blitz, you know, you got to 11 guys in a football team yeah. when you blitz you send more people at the quarterback but then there's less people covering receivers right everybody's asking why do we need to sack the quarterback if they got to complete basically a 30 40 yard pass to get into field goal range well, I just think, cover the receivers i think the the argument behind that is it's going to make the quarterback pass sooner. yeah but if you give him more time his guys can get further down the field and but if you got mad people pass. 30 yards downfield he, he, he'll pick up 15, 16, and it won't be enough time. Yeah. yeah. You play the sidelines ideally, and then you play the deep route. So you just right. let him have the middle of the field. Yeah. And then you'll see if you can get this done. You probably can. But they did let him have the middle of the field. That's where he completed yeah, the first Yeah, but then play, play deep. And the second. Don't send extra, have extra defenders playing deep. Yeah. So you have a guy over the top when Cooper Cup is running deep, yeah. and then that guy can break well, up the Well, that pass guy fucking bummed it up because the guy, they did have him deep. It was yeah. the safety. They have a second guy, is what I'm he saying. He pressed. Yes. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah, you, you should gotta, be backpedaling, my dude. You should have game. a guy pressing and another guy deep. Yes. So press him so he can't even yeah. but really get his route that off. Guy. Yeah, exactly. And like, I mean, it was just an absolutely horrendous call. What's crazy is Tom Brady, there's a quote I saw during the game it came up where people are saying he might retire. And yeah. he's saying like, he says in the quote, uh, I don't know if we're going to win. I don't think we're going to win the Super Bowl this year. He like says it blatantly. I don't think this is the year we win the Super Bowl. Which is crazy. Because I think he knew this team is beat the fuck up. Yeah. We got it last year. I think a lot of people are content with that. I might not be, but a lot of people are. We yeah. brought everybody back. So you didn't get to replace those guys with new hungry motherfuckers. Yeah. There's honor in defending it, but only to a point. Yeah. You start getting beat up. It's like, ugh, these other guys are hungrier. They've never been. The Rams never been. Matthew Stafford, this is his first real shot at a Super Bowl. Yeah. So he's in it. He's about it. Let's go. Okay, break do you down think the... It, do you go. think it was dumb of them to cut A.B.? He could have no, used. He could have used the target. I, I don't. Th I mean, yes, he absolutely could have used yeah. the target, but it's not like he didn't get there. Like he did what he needed to do. He scored enough points. He you put know, his team in position. You know what I think was dumb? They didn't try to sign Odell Beckham when because they had Antonio Brown. Uh, and to me, Odell Beckham is a problem. But if he's playing with Tom Brady, I think he straightens the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, and then Tom Brady on. can do miracles with that guy. Mm, yeah. I thought they should have signed him because they could have gotten him pretty cheap. But they were like, "Ah, oh, we got AB. AB could go." Mm. Okay, break down the Chiefs game. So I'm watching the Chiefs game, and it is, I think, 23 to 29 with like two minutes left in the game. Chiefs score, uh, no, it's 26 to 21, I think. The Chiefs are up. Buffalo drives down the field and scores with like four minutes left. It's 29 to 26. They complete a two-point conversion. Chiefs, it's like four minutes left, three minutes left, whatever it is. They complete a long pass out of nowhere to Tyreek Hill, who's a fucking human video game. He scores a touchdown. I think like 65 yards. It's like a 12-yard pass, and then he just runs like a fucking joystick. Legit, as he's running the end of this, how fucking fast he is, he flashes a peace sign to a guy that's in front of him. He's he's in front of him, come making an angle at him, and Tyree's, Tyree Kill is like that. Like, I got this, bro. It's over. You're not going to stop me. They score a touchdown, and then in the last two minutes of that game, I think 27 points were scored or some shit Unbelievable. like that. Unbelievable. Yeah. The, the Bucks came back down and scored. The Chiefs scored again, and the, the Bucks, I mean, sorry, the, the Bills completed a fourth and 16 to go up, fourth and 16 touchdown pass. Chiefs score again, and then Buffalo scores another touchdown. They have a minute left. They score another touchdown with 13 seconds left. Game should be over. The Chiefs drive 50 plus yards in 13 seconds, kick a field goal to tie the game, and then win it in overtime. Un it is legitimately the craziest fucking game I've ever seen in my life. It was unreal watching that. Unbelievable. And I feel so bad. And this is what sucks about a game like football as opposed to basketball. Mm. Josh Allen, the quarterback of the Bills, obviously he's playing the same conference as this guy, Patrick Mahomes, who's the fucking best player in the league right now. They can never get past the Chiefs. He played a perfect game. He threw four or five touchdowns in this game, scrambled his ass off. I don't think he threw a pick. I don't remember seeing an interception. Mm. Played a perfect game. Scored what should be a game-winning touchdown with 13 seconds left. And you should finally say, yo, I slayed the dragon. We got past him. Can you imagine game seven, Kings, Lakers, when oh, the Kings were up? Oh, yeah, yeah, It was yeah. like that. Yeah. But he hadn't, he didn't, imagine he didn't miss a single free throw. Imagine he's Chris Webber and he went perfect from the field. 
Oh, wow. And played a flawless game, was 10 for 10, didn't have any turnovers, and then still lost because everybody else fucked up. Ugh. That's what it's like. And I don't know how you recover from that. And that's where I'm like, I'm fucking heartbroken, dude. As a sports fan, you want to see guys achieve things. Yeah. Like, as great as Mahomes is, you would love to see this guy get one at least. And I think this was his shot, and it's done. Like, mentally, I don't think he's young. But mentally, I don't think you get past that. Why? What? Yeah, what are you talking about? Because he didn't you do had, anything wrong. Yeah, but you had the you had the team. You had the their offensive coordinator is the maybe the best in the league. He's going to get a head coaching job. So you're going to lose this guy who called great plays, who helped you develop a ton as a quarterback. Right. You did everything perfectly. You had the fucking best player, one of the best players in history when it's all said and done. Probably on the ropes, he was done. You you did everything you could, and then you still couldn't win. Yeah, I think you're looking at that like I was perfect. And still lost. I the way I look at that is in a game specifically like football, you can only be responsible for what you do. Yeah. Okay. So if you like, just like like uh, what's it called, Brady? It's like I think Brady's incredibly upset that he lost, but he's not. They didn't lose because of what he did. Yeah. I mean, you could say, yeah, you should have scored more points. It is on you. But like Josh Allen put his team in position to win, and his defense lost it for him. Right. If he threw the pick and coaching, also what they did, they were. Again, rushing four people, which is not a blitz on Patrick Mahomes, but like, dude, rush two or three people. Who gives a fuck about sacking him? Yeah. Cover Tyreek Hill, cover Jason Kelsey or Travis Kelsey, Travis, and yeah. don't let them eat up field. That's yeah. it. Just keep everything short. But yeah. they were so terrified from that Tyreek Hill touchdown earlier that they had people playing too far back. Uh, they made the opposite mistake of the Bucks. They had people 30, 40 yards downfield. And they let them gobble up. And then you let yardage. two 19, 20 yards plays oh, happen. And they get in fuck. field range, whatever, 19 and 30 or whatever it was. Ugh. And that's how. And even just like kicking. They, so, in, you know, they kicked like a touchback. Didn't take any time off the clock with the kickoff. What normally teams will do is do like a real shitty kick to like the 20 yard line. Yeah. Let some fat ass lineman try to run it back. Yeah. And then waste four seconds. Yeah. If you got the best player in the world on the other side playing quarterback, take every second off you can. Yeah. That's so he got fucked by coaching. He got fucked by his defense. He did everything perfectly and everybody else failed. Hmm. Mm. Hey, Stefan Diggs, who I love, last year there was this cool thing when they lost to the Chiefs in the championship game. He stayed on the field and watched him celebrate. Uh, as like, yeah. I want to remember how shitty this feels, yeah. and I'm getting that next year. Yeah. The guy had one catch for seven yards this, this game. Oh god! So he he stunk it up. Another receiver had upset. four touchdowns. He can be upset, but Josh like, Allen is a is a household name. After yeah, jo this. now he's, he's just a superstar. Not, yeah, everyone. I mean, ESPN was saying like everyone was ready to say he's Tom Brady, and then they forgot Mahomes is Mahomes. Yeah. So he, all he is is like. You're just not Mahomes yet, maybe. I know. But everything else, you're perfect, and you are now a household name. His I legacy mean, went okay. up for sure. Yeah. I worry that if... I don't know when they get this chance. I mean, my, my guys hit me in the group chat, and they're basically like, oh, yeah, this is uh, Brady and Manning now. Like, this is the one-two in the league. And the fact that we're looking at Josh Allen as a two when he wasn't even mentioned in the conversation before this game... Yeah. I think is a huge bump, and he's going to get that self-esteem boost from everybody recognizing I what a so. great game. I mean, he even said something interesting uh, in response to the decision. He's like, "Listen, it, you know, it sucks to lose because I guess in the in uh, overtime, it's just first person who scores a, a touchdown yeah. wins. Mm -hmm. if, you, if it's field yeah. goal, it goes back and forth. Yeah. But uh, so he goes, "Listen, it sucks that we lost, but if we were in their position, we scored, we would have won. So yeah. you can be annoyed by the rules, but right. if we'd won, we'd be incredibly happy with of them. Course. So I thought that that was like a really measured take, especially right afterwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like normally, people would be like clamoring to change the rules, and this is unfair, yeah. and give us a chance to go back, and yada yada yada. But I think that I think his confidence will just be bolstered. Like him and Mahomes also have a similar thing that I think Brady has, and not a lot of quarterbacks have it. I don't think Rodgers has it. Where like. The whole fucking team loves them. Yeah. Like everybody on the team loves Mahomes. And I'm seeing Josh Allen after that touchdown that should have won the game fucking going nuts with his linemen. Just like, yeah. let's fucking go. Yeah. Like he's the fiery one. And that's cool to see that because you don't often see that. Like Manning was a fucking machine, yeah. like a computer. But I didn't see a lot of his players going nuts with him on the sidelines. Mm. Like he's their fucking, that's their boy. That's a rare thing. So it will be cool if they. And Joe Burrow's another one in that conference. And this other guy, Justin Herbert, could be good, like really good. But that's going to be fun as fuck. Mm. But I do hope he gets one. And I, I think Mahomes is so goddamn good, it doesn't really matter. If wow. you can give him adequate blocking, yeah, nobody can beat him. So what is your prediction? I think the Chiefs are going to win it if they get adequate blocking. I think, I, think, I think the Rams will win against the 49ers. I think the 49ers beat the Packers because the weather was so shitty, it kind of nullified Aaron Rodgers. Right. Mm. And I think also a lot of people are going to have takes about how Aaron Rodgers isn't good, and that's going to be fun. 
but like I was looking into some some stats. He's without his Super Bowl run, he's seven and nine in the playoffs. Yeah. Even with it, he's eleven and nine, which isn't that great. Yeah. Without Mike McCarthy, who everybody thought is the problem, and I don't think he's a good coach, he's two and three in the playoffs. Like this guy has not produced at a high level in the playoffs. I think the main problem is when it's fucking freezing cold, the ball is like a brick. Throwing it is harder. Catching it is harder. Everything is harder. So if you're the best quarterback in the league, arguably one of the best of all time, yeah. you don't want to be playing in fucking minus 20 degree weather. Yeah. You want to be in a nice dome. So where do you think? Indianapolis is probably going to make a run. I think this, uh, people say he's going to go to Denver or Carolina, which would be fun. Denver. Denver is a little cold. I would like to see him in New Orleans. Ooh. I don't know if Peyton is going to stay. There's rumors their coach might leave. But if they would just pony up, if they could, whatever picks, Ooh. and they're way over the cap all the time, but just make it work. I would love to see Aaron Rodgers and Sean Payton. I would love to see that. Ooh, interesting. Yeah. That would be fun. I guess the only reason I said Denver is because Elway. Elway. Yeah. Elway's going to go after him heavy. Yeah. They're probably going to. Smart Money says that's where he'll go. And then Carolina may because their owner is like new and aggressive. And it's the coach's last chance to stay. Mm. Who I thought was going to be good, but he doesn't seem to be. Matt Rule. He's like, if he doesn't produce this year, he's fired. Right. So they're going to. Probably throw a ton of shit at Green Bay and say, let's take Aaron Rodgers off your hands. Mm. But I would personally love to see Indianapolis because their coach is good mm -hmm. and it's a dome and their defense is good and their run game is good. Or New Orleans just because it's Sean Payton and the defense is great. Mm. Uh, the Bengals, no chance? I would. I think they have a chance, actually. Really? I do. I think Joe, Joe's Joe Burrow is incredible. I think they got a good running game. Defense is solid. Mm. Not spectacular, but solid. They do their job. And Joe Burrow got that. He just got moxie, dog. Mm. I love this guy. He just got that thing. He's a nice, confident white kid, you know? Yeah. I remember if the Rams win their next game, Rams they could play too. Super Bowl at home. That would be fucking incredible. Uh, so. Tampa did that last year, but it was COVID. So nobody got to enjoy it. The Rams are good, man. I think Stafford, a lot of people don't think he's good. He's good. And they have a pass rush and a great cornerback. They, and they got a great wide receiver. Two great wide receivers. Yeah. I think Stafford's they have everything. An undeniable they need. upgrade. Yes, I think. Yeah, they have everything you need. So yeah. I think they could do it. And we slept on them throughout the year because he's got a cannon, so yeah. he can hit his receivers. So if you got a guy who can run, yeah. But I think they overwhelm San Francisco. I think, even yeah. though San Fran beat them twice this year. Yeah, uh, I just think they're going to win in the playoffs. Mm. They're better. Okay. Okay. So my pick is San Fran KC, and I. I mean, sorry, LA KC, and I think KC wins. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Um. Listen. We have to discuss your redemption story. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you, uh, the first time you opened up for a comedy icon. Comedy mm -hmm. hero of mine. Comedy hero of yours. One of the uh, most successful comedians in history. Yeah. Many times the biggest comedian in the world. Yeah. Uh, Russell Peters. Yeah. Truly, I would not be a comedian if not for him. Brought comedy to... Different continents. Yeah. To India. Like the whole continent. Didn't know stand up before Russell Peters. 100%. So, first time you opened for him at Caroline's. I ate my ass. Bombed that ass. Boy, unbelievable. Just they stared at me like, why is this person here? How much How time long? did you do? Yeah. A couple of days, I think. I don't I don't know. <laughs> How much time did you do <laughs> yeah, on stage? Yeah, no, it was probably time, seven right? minutes, but yeah. that shit felt like a couple, oh, like a couple a year. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it probably felt like about a year and a half <laughs> I was up there. Yeah. Um, and, uh, okay. So I went there, ate my ass at Caroline's, and then Russell, who we will see soon on the yeah. Flagrant 2 podcast, offered me a shot at Redemption at the Beacon Theater. And man, that shit was so fun this time. I went out. I didn't even know what jokes I was going to do until they started calling my name. Really? And I was like trying to fucking scramble. And then I just kind of like closed my eyes for a second. I was like, what do you want to open with? Listen to your gut. My gut be knowing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then I just went out there and opened with what I opened with. And the shit was great. It was great. Russell was like, you killed it. He was introducing me to agents afterwards. Just the most generous guy on earth. Oh, it's sick. Um, it was fucking amazing. Wife got to see it. Uh, friends got to see it. My my in-laws and my parents are like texting everybody they know. Like, oh gosh, is opening for Russell Peters. Like, this is the coolest shit they can tell their friends about. Yeah. Aside yeah. from everything else. Yeah. Like, they can't text them the Alex Jones episode. <laughs> <laughs> so there was just a fucking dope That's moment. Sick. Thanks so much to Russell for giving me the chance, and uh, I'm glad I could redeem myself. Good for you. Yeah, man. Good Isn't that funny you. how careers work, though? The, like, the thing that your family's most impressed by is not the thing that might be the best for your career. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, you do The Tonight Show, and it's like, whoa. Like, if I did The Tonight Show, my parents would be over the moon. Yeah. Like, yeah. that would be the most, the most exciting thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Eh. And they would be 50% of the audience. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Doing it all. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, it is very funny, but it was just so fucking cool for me to go back out there and 
perform for Indians and do well that had probably seen me bomb a few years earlier. Yeah. It was just cool. It was a great Also, moment. like, to do well in front of someone you admire. Yes. It sucks bombing in front of someone you admire. Oh, my God, dude. He we, actually watched yeah. this time. I don't think he watched me bomb. I told him I bombed because I didn't yeah. want to lie. Yeah. But I don't think he watched it. This time, he watched. Yeah. And he was like, yo, that was great, man. Uh, good it was so shit. fucking cool. I That's wish awesome. I got to see yeah. it. Yeah. Well, you guys were, you know, at UFC... Yeah, I wouldn't have traded it at yeah, all. Yeah, but, yeah. But I do wish I got to see yeah. you just crush. Well, um, we are going to have uh, the great Russell Peters on the podcast. Uh, very excited to share that conversation with you guys. Um, yeah. I guess this is, a, this is a big deal. This is somebody that Akash has looked up to for a while. Someone I've looked up to for a yeah. while. This is the originator of, you know, internet comedy. Yeah. You know, and uh, he'll share some things that uh, we didn't even know about how much of an originator he yeah. was in the internet <laughs> space. Yeah. So uh, very excited for this interview. I'm glad that you guys could uh, indulge in it. Without further ado, further ado, here is the man, the myth, the legend, Russell Peters. All right, guys, we're back. We're back with a legend. Uh, the legend. The legend. The legend. No the explanation legend. needed. Uh, we're here uh, with Russell Peters, everybody. Give hey. it up for hey. 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 the motherfucking hey. building. I'm here with the future of this game. Oh, oh future of this game. Thank you. Now, thank you. A lot of people uh, call me a, a YouTube stand-up. That's weird. Yes. Yes. No, no, no. I'm, I, I'm, I love it. I embrace it, et cetera. But I always tell them that the first person that is the YouTube stand-up, the first person to really blow from YouTube. Right. Because there's a generation of people who know me blowing from YouTube and social media. I know you blowing from Instagram. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, but I, you were the original, the original YouTube can make you media famous. comedian. Right. I wasn't trying to be, but it just happened. It just happened. Way. Yeah. What happened with me was in 2004, I did a special in 2003. In 2004, it aired in Canada. And then somebody, I guess somebody, people were recording it. And then they, they were sending it as uh, files. Those Comedy fucking, Now. Yeah, it was Comedy Now. But they would send it as a file. Remember, they'd be like, yo, check this out. And you would have to download a five minute clip and it would take you 35 to 40 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Son, yeah. Wow. So I, downloading how, music and stuff. I and watched yeah. your comedy special off of a LimeWire download. Right, exactly. That's how it yeah. was. Yeah. And then YouTube started in 2005. Yeah. And then somebody put the whole thing there. And then ta da. Yes. Okay, now, I, I, I'm sorry. I heard a story about this. Yeah, go ahead. I, I don't know if this is true. I, right. I, I heard a story that you found out who posted. I still haven't found out. There's, can I tell you a story about yeah. you? Okay. Many stories about how generous you are. Yes. But one story about you is that you found the guy who, or a girl who posted the video, mm -hmm. and then you wrote him a check. No. Not true. He would, though. I would. Not now anymore, but I would have. <laughs> <laughs> you caught me five years ago. You would have got that check. But now I need a check. Yeah. <laughs> I need a check. So what happens? It blows up, and then... I it's mean. It blows up, but here's the thing, it blows up, and then my biggest concern at the time is, oh, what the fuck, how am I going to do my act? Oh, shit. Oh, because you used all the material. Yeah, because I, I you know, at the time, I've, I'm not thinking, you, you got it's right at the beginning of it, so you don't know what, what yeah. the format is, and, you know, at that time, the act I did in 2003, I had been working on since 97, so. Right, right. I had six years to polish that act, and that's why it's so tight and so together and everything. So good. And that was before the times where we had to have a new special every two years. Yes. Yeah. So now whatever my next special is going to be or whenever it's going to be, it's going to be my 10th special. Wow. It's insane. Wow. And I don't know how many of them actually have been special, but. Uh, <laughs> no, bro. I'm, I'd say about three of them maybe were special. Dude, I think you, I think you know you're really famous, but I don't think you know how famous and big and like. I, I thought about this for a is while. Is it fame or is it importance? Cause importance. Because fame isn't and, really... And fame. It's importance. You, importance, you legitimately introduced stand-up to an entire continent. India did not know what the fuck stand-up was until Russell Peters. I wonder and if then, it's not only India, too. Oh, that's what I'm saying. It could very well be China. It was, his, it was his, Asia and the Middle East. His, his Middle oh, East, yeah. His oh, Chinese wow. accent is so fucking good. That's when I'm watching it like this kid who wants to dream of being a comedian but isn't. I'm watching it. I'm like, yo, this guy's fucking good. I want to hate but um, because I'm insecure and this guy got there well, first. That's but, what we all do. I mean, it's, I don't even think it's, it's not even real hate. But it was so undeniable. Like the Indian accent, great. Funny jokes, good vehicles, good setups. Then the, the Chinese accent when I was like, dude, this is a great story with a fucking perfect Chinese accent yeah. that you don't hear on any hacky comic. Be a man. Yeah, so <laughs> good. Yeah, yo, there's some guy in Boston now. Have you seen this guy? He's got, I don't know what the fuck company it is, if it's a pizza company, but he's got 
his whole slogan is be a man. No. And I just saw him post something and he's got shirts that say be a man. The exact same shirts I make at my show that I've been making at my shows Hilarious. for fucking almost 20 years that say be a man, the Run DMC logo. Yeah, you need, that's you fire. And I piece. found this guy online. I go, hey, this motherfucker literally stole everything. <laughs> that's how famous you are. But it was dog. a white guy. I was like, and what are you And that's how doing? legendary you are. People steal did. your shit and have no idea who they're taking it from. Let's like turn your phone sideways. Yes. 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 I remember when I saw that, I go, fuck, why did I think of this? We did a good thing. Yeah, and then everybody thing. was telling I was telling uh, Dove in the elevator. I'm like, everybody fucking went and bit that, and nobody went. I'm just, I, I, they what they should say is, I'm gonna do a little Andrew Schultz right now, and then turn your phone sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like Googling became Googling. You you now Google things. You right. you would Schultz it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mm. I, yeah, I don't know. I guess there's part of me is like, this is what we do. We give it out there in the world, and everybody can do what they want with it. If we create something that's like a piece of technology or like uh, intellectual property, then I then I'm like, hey, respect that, and that's ours. We made it. But new advancements that we might make in social media, those might not even be mine. It might be Mark's idea. It might be Al's idea. It might be Dove's idea. You know. So I, I've talked to these guys. I don't think it's their idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> fair enough. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they like, have if, fucking no idea. These guys. <laughs> I guess I was saying, like those types of things I want to give away to to comics. I want them to be able to grow. But if they're stealing like IP, like they're stealing a fucking joke or that kind of stuff, yeah, it's like, no, no, that's that, a little much. No, for that, it's more of a. I feel like you should say, "I'm doing it," because it yeah. it all started right after you did it. I'm like, yeah, it's not like it's a it's not a coincidence, yeah. motherfuckers. That's that's where you should be like, ah, time to Andrew Schultz this. That's yeah, it. how I'm curious how quick it was before it was like, quick, dude. I I saw you do. Maybe three no, videos. You, no, you. You don't like care about this guy. <laughs> yeah. He talks about oh. himself all the time. Yeah. yeah. Quick, quick, quick what about, was for me? Like from when the video blew up to like when you were doing arenas. Yeah, I like, want and, okay, so, and your I made it moment. I'm yeah. very curious about that. Okay, so I always tell the story. 2000, February of 2004, I got booked at uh, DePaul University in Chicago. They paid me $700 for the gig. 12 or 13 people showed up. I felt bad. I thought they were because in that at that time I was still broke, and I'm like, "Yo, seven hundred bucks, a lot of fucking money." Yeah, and and I felt bad to give me all this money, and only thirteen people showed up. But I said, "I'm gonna do the show," and I did like a really good show, and and then then the special aired a month later, and then I went back to Chicago in November of that year and sold out three nights at some uh, 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 theater. And I was like, what the fuck happened now? And, you know, I went from 700 bucks and 13 people to three nights. And like, I was like 50 grand or something for the three nights. And, yeah, I was like, and sold out. And I'm like. In the same year. In the same year. And I'm like, what Jesus. the fuck is going on? Wow. And, and like, you don't is... know where it's come from. You don't know that this video is going crazy on YouTube. Like. I, I have an idea, but I still don't understand how they're seeing it. Because it's 2004. Yeah. It's not like there's social media where people are like texting you the yeah, clip no. or anything. No, like that. The, yeah, yeah. that didn't exist. And then. Some douchebag brought me to, to New York to perform, um, and he filmed it. And I was doing a completely different act at the time now. And this cocksucker put it out on the internet, too. Oh, yeah. And I was like, yo, I, I kept, I kept t calling him. I'm yo, I'm going to fuck you up. If I fucking find you, I'm going to bust your fucking face. I think I would just punch him in his mouth now just out of, you know, because he deserved it. Yeah, yeah. You're a a yeah I box for now. I do jujitsu. I like fucking people up. So yeah, yeah. It's yeah, one of those yeah. things, you know? I like yeah. It. But I was I was so mad because I was like, dude, that's my new act. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm not getting no money off this one. Yeah. And it's not ready necessarily. Yeah. yeah. So that was two thousand five. But thank God that didn't get very much legs on it. Right. Um, but then then two thousand six, uh two thousand five I got my first deal. This is a deal with a with uh, like a studio. Uh, with uh, yeah, with Warner Brothers. With Tom Werner and Eric and explain Gold a deal to Moore. people like how that works for entertainers. So a deal is where they uh, you, you somebody will hit you up like a network and they'll be like, we want to produce a TV show for you. Here's um, I don't remember how much that was. It might have been like either a million or just under a million or something like that. And I was you like, you know these don't exist anymore. Oh, I know. It's a, it's yeah. And even when I got it, I was like, I was expecting it to be more, but whatever. You get, but you get the million. In case the show gets made. Yeah. Yeah. You make a pilot. They might not pick it up. You still get it. Yeah. The million is your guarantee. Yeah. If they do the show, that's them recouping it, basically, like a record deal. Um, but anyway, the show never went. Yeah. But all the people involved were like top-notch guys. So I was so confused as to why it didn't go. It was like Tom Werner, who produced Cosby Show, Marce, you know, Carsey Werner, all the shit in the 80s. Oh, yeah. They yeah, did. Yeah, and he yeah. owns the uh, Boston Red Sox and all that kind of shit. Mm. 
So I figured it would go with him. And then Jimmy Miller, he's, you know, um, he was um, Jim Carrey's manager. And so why do you think it didn't go? I don't know. I mean, maybe again, at the time, you got to understand if you don't know anybody in this industry, like you're not from the your family's not from the industry. You never been around the industry. You don't really know how this works. Yeah. And I'm one of those guys. I didn't have my you know, my mom worked in Kmart. My dad was a meat inspector. Yeah. I had no fucking clue how this industry worked. And I was like, oh, and I didn't think about. That's why I admire this generation because you guys think about the variables. Yeah. And what if situations we never. Because in my head, it was like I was never supposed to make it in my head. I was mm. just like supposed to be a road comic, you know, uh, work on work every weekend, maybe make two grand if I'm lucky on a weekend and call, you know, call it a career. Yeah. Right. And I was happy to do that because I had no other plans in life. Yeah. So when this happened, I was like, oh, well, I guess see what happens. And well, at least we had a shot. You know, I thought it was over. I, it wasn't a sad moment. It was like, oh, well, maybe we tried, you know, uh, yeah. what are you going to do? And then I got another deal a year later. And then yeah. I got another deal a year after yeah. that. I'm like, yeah, the yeah. fuck is going on? And I started calling deals goldfish. Because you get one, it dies, you just get another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like jizz. Once it hits the air, it's dead. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I kept getting deals. And then... And the touring kept The working. touring kept going. And then the touring kept getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. And I did my... Uh, I did a special in 06, outsourced. Shot that in uh, in San Francisco in January yeah. of, of 2006, and um, and I was like, all right, I guess that's what we're doing now. And then, then the next, and I I did that one through a, a company, and then I was like, there's a way of doing this without a company. Mm. So the next one I did in 2008 at Madison Square Garden, at uh, was that uh, Red White and Brown? Red White and Brown. Yeah. And I did that myself. I yeah. paid for it, produced it, everything. I did all the stuff that I should have been doing from the start. Yeah. That's when I started to figure that out. And then I did Green Card Tour, and I did that again in London. I did the O2 Arena for two nights. And, wow. And I, so now I've done the O2 Arena six times. Okay, Garden, Garden. What, what, garden. Is, what is a garden like? You've done the Garden, haven't no. you? You're, you're fucking due for a garden. Aren't I you won't from New do York? it until I can do the Garden. Where, where are you from? I'm from New York, born and raised Manhattan. Oh, money making Manhattan? Yes, sir. Word, B. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you got to do the Garden. Like, you are the guy that has to do the Garden. Yeah, I want to do the Garden, but I'm and not going to do I'll tell you why you need to do yeah. the Garden. Not me, not Kevin, not Sebastian, not Rogan. None of us are from New York. Yeah. We're the, we are all the people who don't deserve the garden. Dice was probably the last one. No, 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 no. We're, no, Louis not from, yeah, yeah. No, I think Louis Dice might have been the last one. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Dice is the guy, and he's, you know, he's a New Yorker. He represents New York. Yeah, yeah. Rock, rock did it. Oh, rock, rock did it, did it. but yeah. rock did Rock's it. a different situation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you are due for the garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your New York play there. next? We're doing Radio City. We're doing two at Radio City. Oh, I did that. 12 years ago. Yeah. January of <laughs> January of Fuck you, 2010. <laughs> that was unnecessary, I'm going to be honest with you. Piece yeah. of shit. Yeah, I did that, I did that. And, and look that. where you are now. That's right. <laughs> Here we are, guys. I'm at the Beacon this weekend. <laughs> so. No, but Radio City enjoyed it for stand-up? Uh, I loved it. And you know what's funny? One of my security guys, all my security guys are guys I grew up with. They're just, everyone's like, well, these black guy, black dudes are big. I'm like, this is just fucking guys I grew up with. Yeah. None of them are even security. They're just big dudes that I grew up with that'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yo, back up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like having your boys with, yo, focus, you fucking with my man. Yeah. You know, like, that's what they are. They don't do security for a living. Yeah. Right. And one of my guys, he's on stage with me, and he's a short, chubby guy. And, <laughs> and some guy working at Radio City goes, man, this is so cool, man. You comedians support each other. I'm like, huh? He goes, man, I can't believe Cedric the Entertainer's here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I got to get a picture of Pick pulled up for this. And he either, either gets said or people go, CeeLo! And <laughs> Yo, I'm going to ask you a question on something you just said. Mm. You grew up, you were friends of mostly black kids growing up. Mm. It seems like you identify more with black culture yes. than Indian culture or Correct. like black American culture than Indian Canadian culture or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. Is that weird for you that you're you are our guy? You're our fucking number one. You're the guy. Well, here, so here's the thing for me. Any Indian right? in his right mind gives it up to you. I think the reason that is because I don't have a um like an alliance to a certain part of India. Mm -hmm. People look at me, they don't go, oh, oh, oh he's one of them. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, the yeah. guy that's very ambiguous for the right. Indian scene. You grew so up everybody Christian, can tap right? in. Yeah, I'm yeah. Well, so yeah. my parents are both Anglo Indians. Yeah. Now we'll give you a little tutorial Anglo Indians at later. But yeah. uh, Anglo Indians are products of the British being there, right? And Anglo Indians historically married Anglo Indians, so right. that we would try to keep this alive, 
Right. So my like everyone, I never met an Akash. Yeah. Or uh, or anybody with an Indian name growing mm -hmm. up, in, mm -hmm. especially at any oh. family function. You know, my parents are Eric and Maureen. My grandparents are Christopher and Sheila and right. James mm -hmm. and Eileen. Wow. Yeah. You know, these are you know. So this is interesting. Like a lot of times I think the best observers of culture are people who sit right outside of it. You got to be an outsider. Yeah. So you sat right outside even your own culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why you're able to make the observations in that way. Like, yeah, eh. I was able to watch all of it. And then it wasn't until I was around 1920 uh, that I started to see Indian people more. Yeah. And the funny thing is where I grew up. Now it's like 98% Indian. What area? Brampton. Bramlett does. That's what I was curious about because yeah. you grew up in Brampton. But not it, now, so, so Indian. 70s and 80s? Nah. Huh. When I graduated high school in 88, I think there was maybe three other Indian kids in my school. Okay. And they were like just from India. Yeah. Like the girl had the long hair with the one braid. You know what I mean? That yeah, kind of yeah, India. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and she didn't really speak English. So I didn't, I don't even know her name. I wouldn't even talk. What was that like being Indian in Brampton before they were Indians? Well, I had to deal with all the racism. I mean, that, it, that's why I hung around the black kids because they never picked. Can I say on one me. thing? Technically, the racists were right. Like you guys were about to take over. No, they weren't even worried about that. They weren't even worried about that. They were just like the ble the leftover racism from England coming fucking packy. And uh, but it okay, was okay. like like how, so when black Americans talk about like the fifties and sixties, it was I know exactly what they're talking about. What they felt because outside of the segregation. Yeah, because I would be like if I saw a white guy walking, if I saw him walking down the street. In the uh, in the seventies or early eighties, I would cross the street. Huh? Because and this is I'm, Canada. This is Canada. Wow. Because I'm not sure. I know he's going to do something. Whether he left the house thinking he was going to or not, I know he's going to do something. He's either going <laughs> to spit on me, punch me, and call me names, or do all three. Mm. Wow. I was like, so I'd see white people like, oh fuck, I gotta go. I got. So I, when did Canada change up? When did wow. Canada? Well, become? I don't know that it's changed. And Canada's always been real quiet with it, whatever it's, whatever bullshit we do. Um, We're always very quiet about it. We're like, don't talk about it, guys. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> First day with the new mouth. Puncher's chance. Yeah, <laughs> you, you don't Washed have a puncher's chance with that fucking fuck, drink. Man. Okay. <laughs> um, wow, that's crazy. I never thought. I never. And the black kids that I grew up with were all immigrants too. They were yeah. all Jamaicans and, so they didn't and look Trinidadians at you as, and Guyanese. Yeah, black Americans always looked at me as like still very different. But I did. Yeah, but you're you, also you kind of choose twenty which years side. younger than me. Yeah, and it's the same thing you spoke of though, where it's like not to the same degree, but you kind of have to choose a side. Am I gonna yeah. hang out with these white people? Am I gonna hang out with these black people? Because there's no like Indian group for me to hang out with where I grew up at that and, time. And also growing up, like poor neighborhoods in America are Hispanic and black. Mm -hmm. In, Can in Toronto, they were Indian and black. Hmm. Uh, so we were always together. Mm. Whether we wanted to be or not, we were always together. Right. Mm. So you understand each other a lot better. And growing up, the, you know, my family was blue collar. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like we had, you know, there was no like, oh, my son's going to go and do this. And I was like, my, my dad be like, I think I can get you in at the plant if you want to come right. and check out some fucking chickens. He goes, but I'd advise you against it. It stinks. The job stinks. It stinks. You're so they were cool with you being day. a comic. They didn't have an issue. Again, they didn't really. They didn't know what it was because yeah. there was none before me. Right? Yeah, I, my Indian uncles and aunties up until very recently, you were the only reference they have to stand up. Yeah, that's so if a I say I'm a stand up, right? they go Russell Peters. They don't know Chris Rock. They don't know Eddie Murphy. They just know you. How right. do your parents? Do they fucking love that? Well, my my mom now she'll do things I'm like because you know I put her on TV enough times <laughs> and shit, so people see her and they go. Are you Russell's mom? Oh no, I don't know who that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, but she loves it. You can see the little smile. Like I don't know who that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this little eighty year old Indian woman. But my mom looks like she's like a Hispanic lady. You know what I mean? Right. Because she's she's a little darker than him, a little lighter than him. You know what I oh, mean? Wow. <laughs> yeah. And she's got white hair and she's little. So mm. is your like? Uh, are you claimed by Canada? Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So you're just. Canadian comedian there, right? Over there, I'm their guy. Yes. And I have no problem being that. Of course. Despite Should whatever the it. fuck happened to me growing up, I always, people go, you must be mad at white people. I go, why would I be mad at white people? Without them fucking me up like that, would, I wouldn't be this today. So yeah. I kind of thank them for that 100%, little, that little mm. trauma they gave me for the first 15 years. Right. I'm, I, then it stopped when I started boxing, the funny enough. So yeah. Yeah, 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 the minute yeah. I learned how to fight, they stopped. I was like, well, this is some bullshit. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So then you come to America and then you blow up, you blow up here, you blow up in all these different places. But for whatever reason, this is the thing I was always curious about. I was like, how the fuck can this guy be selling out more shows than everybody else, 
making more money than everybody else on the road. Like I, you'd see like the Forbes list of like people who made the money. Right. And it's Jerry Seinfeld, Russell Peters, you know, Kevin Hart, whatever. Right. Yeah. And then I was like, why the fuck haven't they made a TV show with this guy, a movie with this guy? I, I really didn't understand it. Here's and I had I my think. suspicions. But what do you think? Here's what I think. I think, number one, because they didn't create me. If they create you, they own you. That, I want to I elaborate on this a little bit. But go, 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 go. When, once they make you, they, they can take it from you. But they also like to promote it because they need to pat themselves on yeah, the back. We exactly. were right. Yeah. So they had nothing to do with who I am. So they're kind of kind of spiteful towards me, I feel. Mm. So then they go and create their own guys. I'm not going to name names, but I think we know who they are. Yeah. Um, and they give them things who? real easy. Who? 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 Yeah. <laughs> who? Who are you thinking? Hachoo! I sneezed. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> That was good. That was good. That was good. Um, that was good. That was real good. Uh, continue. Well done. Well executed. Probably and practiced it before, to be honest with you. <laughs> probably, he probably had that in his head. The, the for a name, while. yes, but the, the actual act out, it was brand new. Hey, hey, my man still got it, dog. My man still got it. Beacon Theater, go. Um, so I think because they didn't create me, number one. And number two, I talk about things that make them very fucking nervous. And the funny thing for me is that they're nervous. America is so uptight and scared and nervous to hear people talk about race and or culture. culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why when I see you do it, I go, well, how come Andrew Schultz gets it? I go, because you can see in his fucking face, he's kidding. Yeah. It's about the look. It's about the intent. It's yeah. not about you can just, feel the energy. Yeah. It's about knowing where the person's heart is when they say it. And part of that that both of y'all do is knowing specifics about people. Yes, it's not broad brush strokes of, oh, you're a Latina woman, you're gonna get pregnant. You might get those jokes, but there's yeah. also gonna be enough nuance that you're like, oh, okay, this guy knows. Yeah. He's not just saying shit. If yeah. groups that aren't often represented feel represented and in a way that's not like hacky, like in a way yeah. that they're like, holy shit, how do you know that about us? They really appreciate it. And yeah, what is do. racism? We always say this. What is it rooted in? It's rooted in ignorance. Yeah. So if the joke in and of itself is not yeah. ignorant, it's enlightened. It's like, oh, this guy can't be racist because racism is rooted in the opposite of this. Well, well, the problem is that the industry is so fucking dumb and trained to not think about that stuff, yeah. mm. to not recognize differences yeah. unless it benefits their fucking purpose, yeah. yeah, that it scares them. So they'll be like, what did he say? Did he just call that guy a black guy? I'm like, well, is he not? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Am I fucking seeing something you don't see yeah. right now? Yeah. Right. And so it, it makes them very uncomfortable. And I have heard people like try to dissect my act before on a podcast talking shit about me. And they were like, well, listen to this bit. And then I, they played my bit about the difference between Cantonese and Mandarin. And they were like, it's so fucking hacky just doing a Chinese voice like that. I go, yeah. no, you fucking idiot. Yeah. The Chinese people loved it because I knew the difference between Cantonese and Mandarin. Yeah. yeah. So it's white people getting uh, offended on your behalf, which is a joke I did 17 years ago. Yeah. Right. I go, they, they, that, and when somebody gets, when white people get offended on your behalf, that's more insulting to you because that means they think you're you too dumb. You can't defend yourself. Yeah. You're it, too it, dumb to too recognize weak, too it. Too pathetic. Yeah. yeah. Now, can I ask you a question? Does that bother you that you didn't crack off here? No, nah, it used to for a minute, mm -hmm. but it doesn't bother me at all anymore. Because I would say you have the best case scenario, career, fame, everything. Because you are rich as fuck, make tons well, of money. You know, you, you grossed a lot of money. Even The problem with me was I got caught up in the gross numbers. Yeah. I forgot about after tax numbers, after, after agents and lawyers and managers. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. And then you realize how much little you have left. You're like, motherfucker, I did not know. Yeah. You see that Forbes number, you're like, who? Yeah, even, <laughs> even I was like, like that. <laughs> Should I Googled myself and said my net worth was like $100 million. I go... I don't even have a hundred dollars. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. Well, okay. So you made you grossed a lot of money. Mm -hmm. you do, but what you was grossed gross a lot of was money. I tried living like a rapper. Uh, I yo, I would see you balling out and I'd be like, this is so not Indian. That's yeah. how I knew you grew up with Christian parents. Well, I, yeah, I was I was raised Catholic and then yeah. I read the book and now I'm an atheist, so it's perfect. Um, <laughs> All right, guys, let's take a break for a second because we need to make sure you're eating right, okay? This is an important thing in your life, getting good, nutritious food. And how are you going to do it? You're going to do it with Freshly. You're going to get food that's fast but doesn't have to be fast food, okay? Because Freshly offers quality meals without the hard work. It's way easier than finding food that's not processed and blah, 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 fast pre-cooked meals. They take care of it. Done. 
Also, no one wants to spend an hour cooking dinner after a rough ass day at work already. Okay. It's infuriating. It's difficult. You just want to have it ready to go. Yep. And that's what Freshly is going to do for you. Akash, you love Freshly. Bruh, I'm all about it. Why? They got, Why? They, they got healthy options. The food tastes good. They swap out the menu items all the time. So you get new stuff. New stuff, yeah. I, I don't want to get uh, palate fatigue. You get tired mm. eating the same shit over and over again. Remember, it's fresh and never frozen, okay? They're ready to heat and enjoy in just three minutes. This is huge, okay? They're already making the meal for you. It's fresh. It's not frozen. Heat, ready to enjoy in just three minutes, okay? You got to choose from over 50 nutritionist-designed entrees, like their classic steak, peppercorn. They got the uh, multi-serve sides, like their massful mac and cheese, and their new line of plant-based meals, okay? New meals are added weekly, so you're never stuck eating the same thing over and over again. Stop stressing about dinner. Right now, Freshly is offering our listeners $40 off your first two orders when you go to Freshly.com slash flagrant. That's $40 off at freshly.com slash flagrant. This is no, a no-brainer. Enjoy the things you eat. Freshly is going to make that happen. Now let's get back to the show. Did you watch Hip Hop Evolution on Netflix? No. Oh, you really should. Did you no. watch it? Netflix no. is dead, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're not going to hear an argument with me on that. I don't care. I'm blackballed from Netflix. So. Are you blackballed? Why? As far as I know. I what mean, happened? I don't know. I say blackball because I, I realize I am. They never, they don't say it to you. Oh, yeah. Nobody notifies you. But you why? Know. They're not answering calls? No. Really? They don't answer calls. And anytime my name gets put forward, they get, it gets nixed. Really? And I'm why? Like, What's right. the deal? Probably because that fucking sneezing joke you just did 15 minutes ago. Yeah, that. probably. <laughs> Do you think it is? Them protecting that? I don't know what it is, but whatever. Fuck it. Is there, a, is there someone there that you got beef with that's talent-wise? I don't, again, I don't, really don't understand it. Interesting. I really don't understand, but I'm like, whatever. I mean, the, you, here's what you can't deny. That comedy division doesn't exist without me. Mm, I started it. That's a fact, mm. bro. You're the seed. So I'm the seed. And I'm like, go ahead. Focus on the truth. Wait, what comedy division? Speak on that. Speak on that. Well, just the stand-up division. I mean, it didn't exist before me. Streaming stand-up, you mean, specifically? No, the, the straight-to-Netflix specials was me. I was the first guy. You were the first Netflix special? I was the first one. On Netflix? Yeah, the Which first one? Netflix original stand-up special was me. Oh, wow. Holy 2013. shit. Say it with your chest, fam. Yeah, 2013. Wow. Sir, I Seed vaguely guy. remember that, actually. Notorious. There you go. It's not Holy even on there anymore. shit. They took it down? Of course. Why? What do you think? Did you, you give them, like, amount of years or something <clears throat> like no, that? No, they own it for forever. So why would they take it down? I don't know. If, if you're, if nah, you're not, you know, bro. I really don't up. know. I mean, I don't know. It could be cycled out, which is fair. And then it comes back in. I don't, it may or may not. I don't know. But Or it could just be, they don't fuck with you. And they take all your shit out. Whoa. Which they have the power to. They're fucking bigger than I'll ever be. Right. And, I, you know, what am I going to do? I'm not going to go up against them. Yeah. I mean, if they come around and want to fuck with me, I'm not saying I'm not, I won't do work with them, but you don't work with me. That's, that's on you, not me. Why not just put it out on YouTube, man? It's like YouTube's been so good for you. Well, my next special, I'm trying to determine what I'm going to do with it. Well, you just determined it. Yeah, don't. <laughs> YouTube. Bro, it's not even a question. It's like. Like, I was going to shoot it in December, actually. Put it out in March. Just to, you know, I'll, I'll feature for you. Uh, my special in February. I'll open for you. Hey, where's yours going? YouTube. On your channel, right? Yeah, 100%. What, why else? And the you've built your channel. I've been watching. and like, But YouTube is this place. It's a different beast, man. You get algorithmic help. It's not even like Netflix. You know what I mean? Like right. Netflix has a way smaller group of people that it can share your special with. Right. Like YouTube is the world. And that's right, well, where that, the fuck you blew up in the first place. That, like, that's exactly why I said I wanted to do the 10th tenth, tenth one there. Homecoming. Yeah. Well, better than that, but I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Yo, it's got to be YouTube, man. <laughs> Absolutely. YouTube, there's some, there's some other platforms I'm, I'm exploring. Like what? I can't say. I don't want anybody to take my idea yet. All right, fair enough. But, I'm, listen, if you get a stupid bag, obviously go there, but like... Nah, bro, fuck that. If I see you on Quibi, I'm fighting you. <laughs> if you see any... If you see Quibi, you should <laughs> That's actually impressive. <laughs> like, did Russell buy Quibi? Yeah. No, did Will Smith have something to do with Quibi at some point? Nah, that poor They tried. Will. Everybody tried. You knew yeah, that shit was going to fail over, immediately. Yeah, it's, it's they were just giving money out like crazy. Like right? crazy. Yeah. 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 No one cared ever. I think, I think, I think YouTube's a play, bro. I, I, I'm not against it at all. Now, you would have to just wait for the money to come later. The right. money is on the road. Right. No, that I understand. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I want to figure out a way where like comics can make like a, a, I want us to figure out a way where like comics can make like as much money on YouTube as they would do in a Netflix special or something like that. Oh, I think I'm that's not, easily possible. 
it's easily possible unless from the you're road. Dave, Chris, or one of those guys. Exactly. Yeah. Then, but, then you're not going to make that money. Right. So it's like. Yeah, because the offers that you might get if you're an up-and-coming comic on Netflix are not going to be that crazy. And you can make way more money on the road if you're selling tickets if oh, your special blows up 100%. online. So, But I just figured if you look at making the money on the road, which has done so well for you, yeah, like you just want the thing that's going to get in front of the most people so they can come see the live show. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm 33 years in the game this year. God bless. And uh, I, I, I can't stop the road. You love it. I basically want to get out of the industry, but just do stand-up. That's like I don't care yeah, my about friend, film or TV. That's what you've been doing. Yeah. yeah. Well, now because I gave up on that. You know what I mean? I'm like, ah, fuck it. No, I really believe. Because I get calls now. Do you want to be the dad? I'm like, man, this is some bullshit. Yeah. I, but did you ever want to do that? I did want to be an actor at one point. Really? And then you know, it's funny is because did you want to or did it just seem like what you're supposed to do? This no, no, is the I, next step in when, superstardom. When I started doing stand up in '89. Yeah. At first, I was like, I want to be an actor. And then somebody says, well, you're going to need to offer him something else. Yes. I was like, well, then I'll, maybe I'll go do stand-up first and then see what happens. And then I got told like, early in my career, like in the early 90s, oh, you're not good looking enough to be an actor, just do stand-up. And I was like, I look back, I was a handsome motherfucker back then. But uh, <laughs> yeah, bro. But I, I was like, all right, fine. I'm not, you know. And then I was told, there's interviews of me you could see from the 90s where I'm talking about how like there's no product placement with Indian people like, you don't see Sprite Sprite, you know, yeah, just, yeah. like we don't consume the same shit everybody else does. Right. And right. now you'll see it. And it's always like this forced look where yeah. it's like, yeah. like the uh, Indian guy with a white girl on a like, whatever, like a spectrum right. TV commercial. Yeah, I mean, fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, why? Why is it got to be that? You know what I mean? And yeah. Well, I saw one ad. I'm not making this up. I saw one ad. It was a an Asian woman, a black husband. And two white kids with yarmulkes. I'm like, how the fuck did that happen? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The industry. What the fuck was that picture? Just the, <laughs> the industry really wants diversity, but in their terms. They don't understand what diversity is. Yeah, they want to dictate your identity. Still, they want mm -hmm. color diversity, but they don't want culture diversity. Yeah, not yeah. They don't understand that. Like, it's like be white, but in, look Indian. Yeah. Well, not even that. They just they they want to put a room together of people that would never hang out together yes. and be like, oh, they're best friends. Right. Like, no, they're not. They fucking barely know each other. Yeah. Right. That's not how the group last night. I was the only Indian guy at my table. So yeah. I'm like, that's what I know my diversity to be right. like. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, look, I mean, this room is pretty diverse. You'll have this room. I was looking at it. I go, but we are. This is like a movie. Uh, this is like a uh, stand, casting. Room we are exceptional like, in that sense. <laughs> and in that same room in Hollywood, they get those guys together and then no offensive jokes would fly. Oh, yeah. You know I'm what like, I mean? Like bullshit. they have to also do very safe cultural jokes. And it's like, that's not now you're asking for way too much. Mm. This is asking for a lot. Now asking for this, and it has to be the type of comedy you want that's safe and not offensive, that's asking for too much. I was supposed to be in the last barbershop that came out in 2016. Oh, uh, you fucking crushed it. And so Malcolm Lee, when I went for the audition, was like, oh my God, I'm such a big fan. Thank you for coming they in. They gave we're it to another Indian a, guy, I remember. Yeah, I think he was such I like a, I'm so, we're going to have such a good time on this movie. And I'm like, oh, I fucking got this? This is yeah. awesome. I go, he goes, you want to go uh, meet tomorrow? Go, let's meet tomorrow. Let's go meet at the Beverly Hills Hotel and have some breakfast. I went for breakfast. I fucking paid like an asshole. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And then we're like, let's work on the character. And they go, because the line was like, uh, you know, they're, they're, I'm working in a black barbershop and they're making jokes at, my, at me about being Indian. And the character's not saying anything back. I go, if he works in a black barbershop, he some, he's, there's no way he's going to sit there and take it. He's yeah. got to give it back. Yeah. And I said, having grown up around black dudes, I understand. If they give it to you, give it back to them twice as fucking hurtful. God. Yeah. And so growing up, I would, you know, walking home from school, would be like, we'd be snapping on each other the whole way home. Like, Yo, Russell, can you smell what your mom's cooking from here? Like, you know, with the big <laughs> yeah. I go, man, I'm, I'm, I, they'd make the big nose jokes. I'd make the big lip jokes. I'd be like, your lips look like a pound of liver. Your lips look like suitcase handles. Your lips look like suitcase handles. Your, su <laughs> your lips look like bicycle pedals. You know what I mean? That was just like <laughs> <laughs> suitcase handles is crazy. That's so good. Okay, and then what happened? You suggested that, and then no, the no. So yeah, he goes. So they were like, oh, uh, they go, oh, tandoori chicken's feeling a little frisky today, and I'm like, well. I'm going to like snap back on him. And he was like, okay, yeah, I like that. I like that. And then they were like, then I went on the road and I got a call on the road. He's like, hey, they want you to come in and read again in the studio. And I go, what? What do you mean read again? Well, they, they want to make some changes. They don't think your character should be so. I'm like, wait, you're okay if I get fucking abused out there, but it's not okay if I defend myself because they're black? Yeah. I go, that's fucking ridiculous. All my friends are black. We yeah. do this daily. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I go, just because the studio heads can't comprehend that. Yeah. So then they were like, okay, well, I think they're going to go with someone younger. 
Yeah. And they put that kid Utkarsh Utkarsh, in. Utkarsh, good kid. Like him, funny guy. I don't know him uh, at all. Yeah, never met good him. Good guy. But, but uh, yeah, that, I remember getting an audition for that and wondering, why is this? Don't you just give this to Russell? Uh, yeah, I thought it was mine. And I'm around the same age as the rest of the barbers, so it would have made sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but what are you going to do? Fuck you know, it was crazy when I saw you on the, um, they brought back Def Comedy Jam. 2007. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I remember two sets from that Def Comedy Jam. Mm-hmm. I remember Patrice O'Neill. Yep. Mm. And I remember yours. And you dropped the M-bomb and people were going crazy. I did yeah. it the whole set. The whole set. And, but you were like describing how black people use it. You weren't yeah. like calling people, but like. It was one of those things where it's like we were even talking earlier about like cultural nuance and understanding. And for whatever reason, they felt safe and comfortable enough for you to say it and mm-hmm. everybody die laughing. And I and distinctly, I remember those two. I remember you and Patrice. And I remember specifically with you going like, holy shit, that is a very fucking brave choice. Did you question it? And did you ever think about not doing it? No. When I went to go do it, I was comfortable. But when I started the set, I started getting nervous. Hmm. And when I did that. The joke about the Mondays. Mondays. I thought that was that one. Yeah. When wait, I, which one, wait, 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 wait. Uh, the, the, in Boston, that guy said uh, Mondays. He's talking about black people. That's what we call black people out here. <laughs> I go, why do you call them Mondays? He goes, because nobody fucking likes Mondays. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, then yeah, 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 when yeah. I did the punchline, it went silent in the room. <laughs> like you could hear a pin drop in that room. And I remember fucking my body getting drenched. I was like, huh? And I, that's when I just panicked and went, you motherfuckers need to know this shit. And then they stood up and clapped like, whoo, but I was so That's a good scared save. when I did it. That's a good save. I was Fuck. fucking shitting my pants at that moment. That's if you watch it, save. you'll see in my eyes, you'll see my eyes go. <laughs> Yo, get Fuck. that up, please. <laughs> Uh, literally, my Russell eyes Peter's go. What the fuck like did he, I just yeah, do? Because did you try that joke out at clubs? No, or anything like I, that? the story literally had just happened. I it was shot on a Sunday. I had flown in that Sunday morning from Boston. So, you, hold on. So the thing that you were going to tape and have live forever on HBO, mm-hmm. you just did the day before. No, I didn't even do it. It happened. So you didn't even want to like the story. Work it out? The story happened the night, like the Friday night. Um, the Friday night when I was in Boston, yeah, this white dude said that to me, and I'm yeah. like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, and then I told the story on the Sunday when we shot Def Jam. That's fire. I mean, that's, that's wild. That's why, fire. That's wild. Yeah, why? That's I'm 36, right 37 years old at the time. I don't know. I'm just like I, 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 I knew something had to go in around the N word jokes. <laughs> right, right. And right. I was like, I need something else. This is not enough. And then I just happened to, I told the story to Ruben Paul, one of my friends. I was like, what about this? And he goes, yo, that shit's funny. Do that tonight. Asshole. And I, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And I did it, but thank goodness. I mean. So you, you know what, say- though? That, once he said, you motherfuckers need to know this, you're an ally. And it's like, not in the way we use it now, but like, you're like, yeah. oh, he's looking out a little bit. And so it makes that N-word joke a little bit more palatable even. I'll give you another, an example of when I had the panic. The be a man, st- the be a man joke. Yeah, that wasn't part of the act. I was panicking because it wasn't getting a laugh on the huh. on the uh, 40, 40, 50. Yeah, it wasn't getting the laugh I wanted. So you needed a tag. I yeah. needed one more tag. So I just went. The guy just looked at me and said, "Be a man," and I, that's literally that's said the, the first wow. time right there. Wow. The walk. I remember. It's so crazy to like recall these things. Like as I want, but I remember you walking out. And obviously I knew I was a fan, but like, I was like, I'm curious if he's going to be as confident and comfortable in front of a crowd that he shouldn't know about or shouldn't be comfortable with. Right. Obviously you should, you grow up with black people. It shouldn't be a big deal, but you walked out so comfortable. I had no choice. Sometimes it's not your choice. Uh, Again, I used to box. So in boxing, it's the same thing too. Yeah. If I go out and I show the guy that I'm a little nervous, he's going to fuck me up. Yeah. I got to go out with all this false bravado. Huh. Make them think I'm not fu- I'm not worried about you, motherfucker. Yeah, I ain't afraid of you, motherfucker. Yeah, like when I'm doing jujitsu yeah. and I'm rolling with black belts, I, I'm a I'm a blue belt. Yeah, about to be purple, but I'm a blue belt. <laughs> that sounded and, way gayer. <laughs> 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 and and I'm rolling with these black belts. I can't act like, oh my god, you're gonna fuck me up. I'm like, all right, let's go. And then they I they, I, I go manhandle them a little bit. And they're like, oh, okay, motherfucker. I see. He's got some shit. He knows yeah. what he's doing. But I know they're still going to fuck me up. But yeah. At least I pretended that I, they weren't. Mm. All right, let's see it. Now, this is what I mean about white people being real clever with their fucking racism. 
I was talking to this white dude. He goes, so uh, you're living out there in L.A. now, right? And I go, yeah. He goes, what are you doing out there? You doing any fucking TV or anything like that? I go, actually, yeah, I'm doing Def Jam. Oh, really? Isn't that for the Mondays? I go, what? Isn't that there for the fucking Mondays? I go, no, I don't know when they air it. Ah, fucking Mondays. Like, what the fuck is a Monday? They call black people Mondays. You didn't know that shit. And I'm trying to, I'm sitting there going, oh, okay, Mondays. And I'm trying to figure out, you ever try and figure out where the fucking slang comes from? And then I was, I said, what the fuck? What the fuck is a Monday? Why do you call black people Mondays? And I swear on my father's grave, this guy goes, because nobody likes Mondays. That's what I'm talking about. You need to be hip to this shit. <laughs> wow. Same day, boy. Wow. Same day. That is going to fuck with you at work the first day of the week. Good morning, Devon. Uh, nothing like a fucking Monday, huh? <laughs> <laughs> was the act out improv as well? Yeah, because it was like... It's so all that controversy, something. man. And it's always, you know what the funny thing to me about the N-word is, is that white people are trying to stop black people from using the N-word. Now, as a guy who grew up with black people, I know that the N-word does not, is not specific to people. It's, it's a fucking noun. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is used for everything else but people. It's not specific to black people. I see my friends, I'm like, yo, Russell, I seen with some Chinese niggas last night. I see with some Chinese, what? It's not specific to me. My homeboy called me, he was like, yo, you gotta put on Discovery Channel, son. They got this shit on killer whales? Yo, those niggas are crazy! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I'm lying, I'm dying. You tell, tell me this. Sometimes the word nigga can replace an entire sentence. Am I lying? I call my boy, I was like, yo, you went out with that girl last night? Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Def Jam. <laughs> Brave uh, choice, uh, man. Uh, scary. Fire, dumb, dumb Brave moves as a kid. fucking choice. <clears throat> dumb moves as a kid, I say. <laughs> nah, I'm just dude, like, that's great. I mean, I'm glad I got it out. But, but it's one of I would never do it again. <laughs> but did you work? Why? Did you work it out? Great. Were you working it out? No, I. Again, this is all because they called me kind of last minute for Def Jam, Bruh. I think somebody had dropped out, and they were like, "We need somebody." How about Russell Peters? Bob Sumner was like, "Russell Peters, I know him. Yeah, he's good. We'll get him on." And I was like, all right, I'll do it. I, want, I wanted to do Def Jam in the 90s. Yeah, of course, yeah. And I was like, all right, well, DL's hosting it now, and I know DL. I've known DL for 25 years. Yeah. Patrice was on, and I've known Patrice for 20s. You know, I've known him since the 90s. Yeah. So everybody I knew was doing it, so I knew everybody on the show. But again, even black audiences now, when I go up, I, I, I try to avoid it because I'm like, I don't, I, don't, I don't have the fucking... I don't have this in me anymore. Mm. Where I, I don't have that... Um, that fucking innocence, that that daring kind of, I'm gonna win you over shit in my brain anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Now it's like, ah, eh, fuck, either you know me or don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I look back, like I see cats that come to the show and I'm like, oh man, I'd love to get on. I'm like, I put people on because I'm like, I remember being that guy. Yeah. And I respect you wanting to be on, even if it's not your crowd. I wanna, I wanna see how you do with it. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, you let me open for you once. I did not do well. That shit was definitely new. mediocre. No, I wasn't new. new. I wasn't new. I didn't <laughs> do well. It was probably 2016, 2017. And they just stared at me like, what are you exactly? What's going on here? Are you just going to bring up Russell? Because that's all I want to see. A lot of times that happens. Um, <laughs> I remember you laughed at one thing, though. And I was like, thank God, dude. I, you laughed at one thing. And I looked in the corner of my eye. And then you walked off. I was like, thank God he's leaving, bro. Because this shit is... It was I bad, can feel bad. it getting bad. No, it was, it, it, it again, it's but the, with my audiences, they're not. They never walk out going that first guy was shit. They don't even understand because there's there's certain comics who have um, fans that are comedy fans, and then there's people that have fans that are their fans. Right, like mm. Sebastian, think, Sebastian, me, Fluffy. Yes, we mm. all have our own fans. Yes, yeah, they yeah. may not be comedy fans. Mm. Yours is a combination of the two. Yeah. I don't think I haven't even dropped into a comedy club in a while just because I'm like, ah, eh, fuck it. I don't care. I love that. <laughs> Do you not? Don't you want to work out I care and I don't sometimes? care. Like, I want to go and hang out. But at the same time, I'm like, do I want to go and hang out or do I just want to go live life a little bit right now? Yeah. You know? I remember you pulling up to the cellar once and I remember like you were working. You were like pulled up. You went down there. You were like working out some stuff. 
and then you could tell what the audience wanted yeah. and you're like and you're like all right you gave them like one joke yeah they're like you're like ah oh, that's what you want or something like that yeah. now does that frustrate you no and now <clears throat> at that time it did but now it doesn't it, i'm i'm like i'm fine i think you hit a certain mark and you go you're 33 years in kid yeah your your career is older than most people yeah <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean like so at some point you got to go listen just you look at guys like Dom Herrera. Yeah. Like Dom is 70 now or 70 something. And he's still so sharp and so funny. He called me the other day just by accident at like three in the morning. And I happened to be awake and I answered. And he's like, oh, so, you know, this is in Ireland. I thought, you know, I wouldn't call you this late at night. I was calling Ireland. And he goes, what the fuck are you doing awake? So? <laughs> and then he just started going into joke after joke. And him and I just get on a roll with each other. And I'm like... And you watch him go on stage and he's just so funny every time. Yeah. And it, it, it doesn't show that he's been in the game for 45 years. Yeah. It shows that he's a seasoned veteran, but it doesn't act like, oh, I'm doing this because I have to. Yeah, That's just the way it is. When did you reach the point where you're like, oh, okay, it doesn't matter what these losers think. I'm very comfortable <laughs> with the type of comic I am, where I am, et cetera. I, I, that's a, it's a newfound piece. Mm. It's a newfound piece. Okay. Mm. There was a long time where I was like, oh, I need to be accepted by my peers i'm like fuck yeah. my peers yeah that was something i used to yeah. wonder if you felt that way and i was like he shouldn't fucking i, I did i did it some, at some point then i was like ah fuck it what do i give a shit yeah, yeah. they're not gonna put any money in my pocket right they're yeah. not gonna pay any of my bills and if shit goes bad for me they're not gonna look out for me yeah so fuck them all yeah yeah the back of the room is the least loyal people on earth i i you know i did an interview in 96 97 in a canadian paper <clears throat> and i said that i said there's a lot of comics that go on stage and make the back of the room laugh yeah and the back of the room was just comics. Well, the comics were never going to buy a ticket to your show. Yes. Mm. I said, and besides, comics are, are, are geeks anyway. Yep. So if all you did was make the back of the room laugh, all you did was make a bunch of geeks laugh. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. And we want to, right? Because those are our peers. Those are the people that yeah. we love and appreciate. And that's always valuable. Yeah. But you can't give up on the comedy that you want to do to make those people laugh. Yeah, you got <clears throat> you to gotta stay focused. Yeah. You got to do what you're going to do. There mm -hmm. is a way just to make the people in the back laugh. Yeah. And that is a skill set, too. And some yeah. people spend a disproportionate it's a amount set, of time. But to you're going to be renting an apartment with three other dudes at for the rest of your old. life. Yeah. 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 So if that's what you want, that's great. Yeah. And as a comic, we appreciate you for doing that for us. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. but as a man, I'm like, I don't know how to fuck you live with yourself. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 100%. You guys going to have kids? I'm ready. I, rec I recommend don't have them. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah, uh, hold on. You're Why? gonna have to talk me out of this because I'm ready whenever. Don't fucking do it. Why? I love I know, kids. Just, They're it, the best. Your life will change immediately, and I don't want to say for the better or for the worse, but it definitely will change. No, that <laughs> and everything you remember about life being great will change. But then doesn't it get better? The thing that's How? the thing. The kid is greater than all of that, right? Says who? <laughs> well, <laughs> hopefully, the kid you got, hopefully got you. Are they listening? For your kids' sakes. <clears throat> I love my kids. That, that, that goes without saying. Like, I, once you here's the thing. Once you have them, you're fucked because you can't imagine life without them. Yeah. But that's because you love them. Yeah. But that's fine. You. But if you don't have them and you don't know that, you're missing nothing. Yeah, but that's marriage. You're getting married again, dummy. Yeah, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm 51. She's 50. We're good. Like we, uh, we both, we both are like, eh. We know we we know what we're doing. Yeah, but okay. you really wouldn't have them if you could do it again. I uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah <absolutely. laughs> Wait, really? Yeah. If they said we have a time machine, <laughs> it would take it back to 2009. You see? You see? Yeah, yeah. And you won't have any memories of anything. <laughs> After 2009. I like this, yeah. I like this guy. Put my ass in. <laughs> really? Yeah, but you also got a girl pregnant at the peak of your fame on accident. Well, you know no. I mean? like, uh, that, the, when I had my daughter, it wasn't an accident. I wanted to have a baby. Yeah. I, I, I was 39. Well, then that's a bad decision. Right. And that's why I'm telling you not to do it. You should have uh, waited. But he's married now. It doesn't matter. I, it doesn't matter. You, you're just doing it because you think... Hey, you know when Not you said, all my did life. you want to become an actor because you figure that's the progression of being that, a comedian? Yeah, you're just you want to have a kid you think because this that's is what it is. Yeah. I'll tell you something that's so gay, but it's so real. All my life, I've been like, I can't wait to be a dad. <laughs> the only reason you want kids is because you can share clothes with them, but that <laughs> has nothing to do with it. 
So why really, don't you get the show sponsored by Build a Bear for a couch? <laughs> 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 we would love it. We, I would love it. We'll put so your we, hat on top of it. It'd be great. We, had, we we shouldn't have kids. Is that really what you're saying to us? Yeah. Right? If you listen, where you're at in your career right now. Just doesn't it put that going. battery in your back? Like No, it doesn't. It takes the steam out of your engine. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you needed steam taken out of your engine because you were living like a rapper. Yeah, you were. Maybe no, you need to not. calm down. I started overcompensating later. Ah. Uh, That's what happens. You're like, I'm still good, guys. I'm still trying to hang on. Yeah. It fucks you. It fucks you up. Yeah. So you didn't care initially. No, I was so 39. I was like, I really want a kid. And I was dating my daughter's mother at the time. And that fucking stupid song was out and i kept singing it to her i kept going have a baby my baby baby be a millionaire have a baby my baby baby be a millionaire this bitch is a millionaire now listen uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's the most you made in a year uh Ooh. i think gross you mean yeah gross and I then think, net. i think it was like 25 or something like that 25 and then what's the net seven the, yeah the net's about that yeah if you're wow. lucky if you're lucky seven. if you got lawyers agents managers all that shit 75 percent the irs that's 50 percent gone yeah then you got managers, agents, uh, accountants, lawyers. lawyers, yeah, and they're getting paid off the gross. Yeah, they're not getting paid off the twelve and a half that the government took. Yeah, that's right. So that's it all right, goes down right. from there. So yeah, you'll you'll end up with around seven, maybe six, seven million. Wow. And then if you're an idiot like I am, and you're thinking, you know what, I'm gonna take a private jet everywhere I want to go. Is that how you were traveling? I was I, I, like, it'd be literally. <laughs> I see you doing it. I'm going. I hope they got that jet for free is what I'm thinking. Oh, come on. This guy's taking jets from fucking San Antonio to Lubbock. He ain't taking <laughs> no, he ain't taking no cross I know, country. but that's still about an $8,000 ride. About 10000 but it is what it is. No big deal. You know what I mean? I remember I did a movie once because the, the guy that was doing the movie owned a private jet company. He gave me... Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of credit, free private genius. Debt. Yeah, it, it's uh, nice to fly private. It dude. is, but that that's like four trips. L.A. to New York, <laughs> that's fifty k. Yeah, like, yeah, that's your done. Yeah, that's four that's, trips that's to a four L.A. Trip. Yeah, yeah, to put me in a lay flat. I'm good money, bro. No, lay yeah. flat and the lay is flats better. are better than a lay private better. jet. I believe and they also that. have the internet and that kind of stuff, but not dealing with TSA, not dealing with any of that. Literally showing up two minutes before your flight. Mm -hmm. Is just awesome. It's probably really it's cool. It's a great feeling. It's probably really cool. It's not worth fifty thousand dollars. No, it's not. No, it's, it's not. not worth what you're paying. Yeah, there was one time in 2012 that I almost bought a private jet. That's <laughs> like at the height of making all this money, and I was like, I think I'm gonna buy this jet. We had one on tour, and I was like, guys, like it's for sale. They want they want 1.3 million for it. I go, that's it, and it was a beautiful jet. It was mm. fucking a 14 seater, and you could stand up in it straight oh, and be shit. tall. And it had, I could it, do that either. It way. was yeah. I mean, yeah, you could stand up in a fucking mini. You know? <laughs> Mini Cooper. Yeah. I stand up that's straight. That's the Mini. Yeah. That's the Mini. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So what happened? Why did you buy uh, 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 it? Was like a, it was like the plane was made in like 1971. And everyone's like, start asking people about planes. Like, no, don't fucking yeah. do it, kid. Uh, I go, what if I just give it to a company to, charter. you know, they can charter it out. And he was like, you're not going to make your money back. You're, that mm -hmm. thing's going to be in the shop more than it's going to be in the air. Oh, wow. Uh, more in maintenance a year than the cost of that one point. Whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And, and fuel, like, too. They don't tell you about fuel. Yeah. Oh, fuel, parking. Yeah. Where do you park that fucking yeah. thing? Somebody's going to charge you to sit your jet at their airport. Yeah, so you're going to go to the Nganu fight. Yeah. Who do you think is going to win? I really don't think Nganu is going to win, to be honest with you. Nganu's my boy. But we won. I know he is. <laughs> I listen, I like Francis, but I, I really think he's underestimating Cyril. This is what I'll say. Power is the great equalizer. It is. If you get hit by it. If you get hit. And Cyril is, is very skilled, and you obviously see the sparring footage come up, and it looks like he's getting tagged, etc. Francis got a hell of a chin, and power's a great equalizer, and you're out there with four Well, he does gloves. have a good chin, but what happened with him versus Derek Lewis? You know Neither I mean? of them threw. Neither of them threw. And I guess we're going to see what happens. I mean, I, you know, either way, I'm good with it. Yeah. And who else, who's on the undercard? Somebody else is good on the undercard. Devis, Davison Figuero. I Figueroa? can't pronounce his fucking Fig Brazilian ass name. And then the other guy is Brandon Moreno. Oh, yeah. Brandon Moreno is defending their, his title. Yeah. Yeah. You know who's sparring with Brandon Moreno is a buddy of mine, an Indian kid who's an MMA fighter. I'm a fan. Yeah. You know him? Gary Manga? No. Gurdarshan? No, I'm a fan now. The man, the lion, he calls himself? I'm a fan. Oh, he lion follows Hunt? us, I think. Yeah. 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 Gary Manga. Isn't he from like Vancouver yeah. or something like that? Yeah. Oh, shit. So he's Probably been sorry. helping Moreno get ready for the fight. And I know this because Gary lives in my house in Vegas when he's in training camp. 
Dude, the most generous guy. You hear the crazy stories about Well, this listen, guy. you got an Indian guy in the MMA world, and he's like, I'm like, I know how that, I, being in the fight world for so long, I understand. You want that to come out of your pocket? No. It's like, Gary, we need, you can stay in my place, and you could train. There's nobody there. You'll be in solitude, which is what you need when you're in training. You want to go train, come home, and not have fucking people barking at you. Hmm. No, nah, but I've heard stories, you can say what's true or what's not. Like, if a kid doesn't have, like, That's a, nice. who's opening for you doesn't have a laptop or an iPhone, you're like, yo, go to the Apple store, give him my name, you fucking lace it. You take care of everything. You know, you got to eat. I heard a kid be like, oh, that's a nice watch. And it was probably like $10,000. And then you just bought it for him. Well, let's not get crazy. I... <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, I mean, dog. I'm getting been jealous. Like, you know, there's, there's things I did and then there's things I didn't do. You know, you know sometimes <laughs> it's better to embellish. You that's know? the key. You got to do enough that people can embellish. So yeah. I will say that. The stories about yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're good. Try it. No, 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 he don't drink. We like don't my dad, drink. My dad I drink on my wedding, too. bro. My dad did that to me. That's why I never drank till I was 31. Really? My dad made me pour him a drink and he'd go, taste it. And I go, oh, fuck no. And he's yeah, like, yeah. taste it. And I go, oh, oh yeah. why did you drink this? He goes, oh, there. Now you won't drink now. <laughs> I didn't drink till I was 31. It worked that for 30 worked. years. Yeah, you have good uh, you have good karma out there in the stories about you. I will say that. Like I didn't realize how Indian you were until I saw clips of your wedding on his page. Hell, fucking yeah, dog! And I was, was like, fire, huh? you were like all in. I'm like, wow, I was, wow, I couldn't do that. So then you could have texted me; it would have been your first Indian wedding. <laughs> I know. I, I was I was going to ask to be invited. To be honest with you, I swear to God, if you'd asked me, you'd have been there. No fucking. I, I was going to ask, guys. I feel kind of a way. There was invited. no way in hell your wife would let him be at her wedding. One hundred percent, she <laughs> He's going to be the star <laughs> of the wedding. Yeah, you know, Russell nice Peters is different. We don't have. Flex that would have been. You know, uh, that's true. Like yeah, flex yeah. of all flexes. <laughs> Let me that's like you. if for black people having fucking Beyonce, not even Jay Z, Beyonce at your wedding. You're gonna oh, like this. At my <laughs> wedding, my wedding coming up, um, Cedric the Entertainer is marrying us. Let's go. <laughs> Ced went and got ordained <laughs> online for us, and he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna. Is he gonna us. give you a gift? I don't know. <laughs> I think that is sometimes the gift. That is people, a gift. What you say right now? That. What did you don't say right say now? That. No, that's he still hasn't Russell. given me a gift. He hasn't did given either one of us a yes. wedding gift. But you're not a Jew. Yeah. Is she? Well, technically, but no. But but, so but far, I still owe him a gift. I've just been thinking about a lot of other things. I'm going to get him one. He didn't get but me one I either. Oh, one? What do you I think? You money. Know? Tesla. You yeah, no, one too. It's a gift from Seth because he's famous. You are Dove. And you're more of a fucking pigeon because you're Moroccan. You know what I mean? You're <laughs> <little bit>. <laughs> fair in Hebrew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Russell, Andrew, Akash, buddy. Before we get Dove, out of here, you uh, guys, <laughs> <laughs> please promise us you'll talk to us before you make a decision on the yes. next special. Oh, I, that one hundred percent. I would love. I respect both of what you guys are doing. So I would. I would. 100%. I would respect your opinion anytime. On what I should do. Well, yeah, let's have some combos yeah. about it. I think I'm down. some cool things can yeah. happen. And that would be really fun. Going back to India. You've done India, I obviously. did India. I did my last special in India. That's right. That's that right, was that's the right. one on Amazon. Russell, tell them, tell them where they can find you. Tell them all the dates. Tell them everything. Like Find me at AkashSing.com. Uh, <laughs> RussellPeters.com. Get your tickets. Go see my show dates. Instagram at Russell Peters because... I only have 488,000 followers and I cannot seem to crack 500. We're going to make it happen. We I mean, like, that. I'm like, it's free, motherfuckers. What are you doing? Like, <laughs> you, you don't even have to pay. It's free. Just fucking click the follow button. You don't even have to like my shit. Just follow you, pricks. Yeah. I did the that. same plea on Jordan Peterson. Really? <laughs> and people be messaging me. I'm only following you because you asked for it on Jordan Peterson. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care why, as long as you're there. <laughs> but you, YouTube, oh, by the way, too, though. Hmm? YouTube, too. Oh, yeah. YouTube as well on my channel, Russell Peters. Channel, I think we got 1.8 million. There we go. Hey, that's a good wild. number, right? There yeah. we go. I got that new plaque, the million plaque. Nice. That's yeah. the gold. Is that nice. the gold one? Nah, yeah. yeah, the gold one. Yeah, the gold yeah. one. Yeah, the silver one's for hundred thousand. And yeah. then the, the diamond. I want the, the diamond. That's the ten that's million. The 10 you got million. that? Not yet. Not yet. Man, that's the Jake Paul one. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna get there. Yeah. We're gonna get there. But yeah, go check out Russell, man. Thank you so much for and taking the time. And Beacon Theater this week. Beacon Theater. Beacon what are the dates this week? January twenty one and twenty two. Twenty one and twenty two. The following week. I'm in Virginia at Tyson's, uh, the Capital One. Okay, Tyson's Capital One, because it might be Virginia that they can yeah. see you. And then Texas right after that. And where? At the, uh, in, I'm going to his home. Dallas. I'm be, Dallas. <clears throat> I'm going to be in, uh, was Grand Prairie. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sugarland and uh, San Antonio and Austin. God bless. Sugarland near Houston, so we got that. Go check that out. Yeah. Man, thank you so much, bro. We're huge fans, brother. Thanks. I'm, thank I'm huge fans love, of both man. of you. God bless.
Thanks guys. for watching him grow as a comic. Oh, wait till this special drops, yeah, man. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun. Flagrant 2, thank you all for listening. Peace.